your queen is, you're going to have a problem with monarchy. <laughs> right? That's just a fact. You're going to have a problem with monarchy if you don't know what a king or a queen is. You have an issue with monarchy if you don't know what a king or queen is. You're going to have a problem with a kingdom if you don't know what a monarch is. How many people know if you were to go to a chieftain right now, if you were to go to a Zulu chieftain, if you were to go to an Angolan chieftain, if you were to go to a Shui or a Shanti chieftain, if you were to go to a Kushitic chieftain, if you were to go to a Kemetic chieftain, whoever you're going to, and right, if you were to go to, to whomever and you were to sit there and you were going to try and talk to them, do you even know how to enter into their court? Right? Real talk. Do you know how to even get into their court? We say enter into his court with thanksgiving. How do you enter into the court? We just say with thanksgiving. How do you show thanks to a king? How do you show thanks to a queen? Thanks for being part of the community issue, queen. Right? How do you do so? Right, and you, you better know. You're supposed to know before. Think about, watch this. Before you go before a king or a queen, you know you're supposed to bring a gift, right? That's why knowing your gifts are important, even in this, even in what we call the spiritual or pneumatical aspect of thing, right? Um, uh, you know, even the ravak or ruak. Like, like you better make sure that you comprehend that you bring a gift. Your gift is powerful. Thank you for the love. Your gift is powerful because you better know what it is. Because before you go before a king, you're supposed to bring your gift. Yeah, error could it bring death. It can get you locked up. It can get you to where you're never allowed to come back to the tribe. Before you come before a king or queen, where is your gift? Kings, today. I'm focusing on kings today. Kings, where is your gift? What is your gift? How do you bring it before others? If you say, what's up, king? Every, every king that I would say, what's up, king, to, I must present a gift. What's up, queen? Every queen that I come before, I must present a, a gift. That is how royalty works. Hey, man, how you doing, Miss Modesty? How you doing, Miss Mac? But we come before royalty, we don't have a gift. We come before royalty, we don't have a gift. Hey man, yeah, my wife was talking about Sister Beverly. She's talking about your, your body, but I got some of it outside right now. Matter of fact, on the for the ones that my wife and uh, her mother got, it says Queen on them. For the ones for myself and our, my Prince, right, Prince Solomon, it says King on it. And I know it's backwards. I apologize, right? But let me make sure y'all can see it. If you're on TikTok, it shows it backwards, right? So there you go. It says King on it, right there king right somebody bestowed a great gift upon us gave us a lot of different things matter of fact she gave us some bracelets and everything right even and some of you even blessed us the reason they gave it to us is because you guys blessed her business and then said hey take some of the money that you that you blessed us with and bless us we appreciate you right and it's it's really nice stuff i i, I have a picture of it of the presentation we put presentations before i probably put another one i've used this one now so you can't really i don't want to really show it because it's got me you know scooping and stuff like that uh, but I'm, I'm definitely going to put some on i meant to put some on earlier but i was running behind um trying to get this stuff updated and so but yeah you know like you present a gift you present a gift before a king you present a gift before a queen and here's the deal you present a gift before a king or a queen because when you present a gift what you're saying is, is whatever I'm giving you as a king or queen, I expect something greater in return. Uh-oh, we got somebody. So you saying queen means black or white? No. Even though I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking from a perspective of diaspora, sure. But yeah, there are white queens. I mean, there's Queen Isabel. There's Queen Victoria, right? There's Queen... Uh, well, Queen Catherine's actually black, even though she's mentioned as being white, um, just like King James was actually black. But I mean, they're sure there's, there's King Henry VIII, right? But just because they exist doesn't mean that has to be my focus. I learned about them and they're respected. Thank you, Troy, right? They're respected. They're respected enough to make sure that you actually learn about them. And so a lot of times they even omit a lot of those things that are there. So. You know, that's fine. But, you know, do, do you know about Queen Ty? Do you know about Queen Nzinga? What do you really know about Queen Esther? 
do you actually know her real name? So even if we're going to talk about that, yeah, you know, so if your whole thing is to come in here and try to cause dissension or try to say that I'm being a reverse racist or something because I would simply uplift my people, uh, I mean, to each their own, I guess, but that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the last person, especially if you watch stuff that we talk about. If you would just simply look us up, I'm the last person that you probably need to come and try and do that with. Um, right. So if you have if you see me just simply because of the way I'm dressed, it would make the assumption or whatever. Oh, you weren't saying that you just found out. OK, OK, my bad. We deal with a lot of different people on here. So if that's not what you meant, I apologize. Um, I'm just saying um, we're, we're the last people that you probably have to worry about that with this group. I can't say I can't speak for everybody who is in existence, but we put our culture first like anybody else does. So if you're if you're Spanish, you should know about Queen Isabel. You know what I'm saying? Well, this uh, this actually um, and thank you for the compliment. It, you know, I, I, I'm assuming you complimenting it. Um, this was actually ma handmade. Um, I haven't been able to contact the person that made this. I wanted to recently because I wanted to bless her and make sure we, she could make some business off of this or whatever. But um, I haven't been able to contact her. She's um, up in age now, probably. Um, but yeah, this was actually handcrafted. Um, so this was made from scratch. So, um, you know, I just basically, she knew my style and she just made it for me. So I'm thankful for her, um, you know, making it for me. So I've had this five years, four years, something like that now. Right. And it's something that, that, that comes from our culture. It's something that represents who we are. Um, right. So we're talking about Kings and Queens and even the way, so when we talk about this Kings and Queens and stuff, um, especially focusing on Kings domain, right. We don't even know what Kings are and we have a really wild place where, we have somebody who we have a lot of people who are not kings. How you doing, Denise? We have a lot of people who want our society to work, but we don't have a domain for kings to be in. And as we talked about, we don't even have um, domains in which we can make sure that we reward kings. Of course we do. I believe in kingdom law, marital law, universal law, laws of attraction, law of first mention, natural law, law of equity, um, common law, uh, admiralty law. You better know about maritime law. Yeah, because everybody has rights, but laws protect rights. And so once again, in order to be a king, you must first recognize that you must have a domain and we must have a domain that rewards kings. As we talked about before, we must have a domain that rewards kings. Do we have a domain that rewards you for being royalty? In this domain, if you are yourself, you were punished. In this domain, if you would dare say that you are masculine, you were toxic. Right? You said women were considered to be kings. There are women that would give themselves the title of kings, even in African culture, because they didn't want men to look down upon them. Uh, but we all knew that they were, in fact, queens. So there are women out there that said, call me Pharaoh, too. Right. No problem. You're Pharaoh. But we didn't think you were a male. <laughs> you know, we just but, but she would do it because it'd be like uh, matter of fact, same queen Ty I mentioned. She did that because people were trying to be like, oh, well, you're a woman. So you're really a Pharaoh. There was a little bit of, of even back then misogyny creeping in. Uh, a lot of people didn't worry about it. But people who were trying to take power from her were trying to use that as an excuse. So she said, OK. You're going to say that you got to be a male to be a pharaoh? Well, then I'll be a male. <laughs> I'll be a king. That's why she did it, right? It was simply for legal things to be able to protect her rights, right? Remember, law protects rights. But in essence, we know that she was a queen, right? You know, pharaoh is the system. Okay, yeah, we could go there too. I get what you're saying. But we're focusing on the king's domain because kings are not rewarded for being kings. We don't have a domain that rewards a king. You cannot have a kingdom without a king's domain. You cannot have a place, if there's no place for a king to have dominion, he cannot be a king. I, thank you for the love, Sister Barbara. And thanks for everybody on, on the podcast, for being on Hello Lady Green. Thanks for everybody on the podcast. Thank you, Brother Cole, for being on. Thanks for uh, everybody on YouTube. Thank you, everybody on TikTok. We appreciate you for any likes, shares, uh, gifts, um, comments questions etc um if i don't get to your questions right away because i do need to focus somewhat on <laughs> the uh the theme so if i don't get to what you're, you're asking about right away you know just simply if you're on tiktok you can just put it in the q a box and i'll definitely make sure that i get back to asap right so when we're talking about these things thank you uh, um um chris appreciate you uh chill pill 
I'm um, sorry. So when you when we think about these things, right, we don't have a domain that rewards kings. Hello, Grand Rising to you, Richie. And we're missing a lot of that. So a lot of things are missing because if there's no reward, if there's nothing that says, hey, if you're a king, we will lift this up. We will lift you up. Hey, if you treat a woman with respect, you're just supposed to. But if you dis if you mistreat a woman, a woman, right? What do we do? We say, oh, well, if you mistreat a woman, we'll put you on front street. But what about if you always treat a woman with respect? Will we lift you up? What about if you're always a father to your children? Y'all see me putting on the shea butter, <laughs> best body butter, right? Great stuff, right? But do we have something that rewards our kings? For example, right? Not today. I believe it's next. Is it next? Matter of fact, let me look on my calendar real quick. I'll be able to look and tell y'all real quick, right? But um, if we were to look up Father's Day, which is coming up, is it next Saturday? See, I don't even know, in all honesty. Let's see, calendar. Or can somebody tell me when Father's Day is? I got all this shea, shea butter on. I can't really type <laughs> right now. Can somebody tell me when is Father's Day? Somebody help me out. When is Father's Day? You said peace is the reward? Well, that's great, right? But I think we can also say things that the 19th, okay, so it's not next Sunday, it's the Sunday after, all right? So June 19th. Wow, I said, okay, I didn't even realize that. So the day after my son's born day, that's cool. I didn't even realize that. It's the 18th? Hold on. So what's today? See, I need, today is June 5th, so then you have the 12th and you have the 19th, so it'll be June 19th. It would be the Sunday. So June 19th. So that third Sunday. So so Father's Day, for example, worldwide, apparently Father's Day is considered to be the 19th most popular holiday. Guess what the first two most popular holidays are? Are your born days on the 20th? Cool. I think Minister Tamer's born day is right before Solomon's. Or somewhere in there. Or maybe it's right before something. I got it written on my calendar. It's also Juneteenth too, yeah. So we're gonna look at doing something, try and do something for both <laughs> on that on that Sunday. So the first, so the so yeah, so the most popular holiday is Christmas, and then the second most popular holiday is Mother's Day. I think Easter is pretty high up there too. I don't think it's number three, but it's like number four or five somewhere in there, right? Halloween, I think, is like number six. So I want you to think about that, right? That basically is Jesus, your mama, Easter, which isn't even Passover. That's Ishtar. That's celebrating the moon, um, you know, uh, deity, goddess, et cetera, the Babylonian stuff. That's why you get the bunny rabbits and eggs and stuff because she's supposed to be the egg that came from the moon. She's supposed to be very fertile. And, and then after that, you got Halloween. You got ghosts and ghouls. And then somewhere way down there, number 18, right? Now, that's not our culture we're talking about. Obviously, these aren't our holidays. These aren't our holy days, right? You got Thanksgiving about genocide and killing us off. And I say us because I am part Native, right? Um, as many of you are as well. But you have all these different things that come up. There's something called Arbor Day. I don't even know what that is. But you have all these different things. And then somewhere way down the road, somebody said, oh, yeah, fathers. <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. Father's Day. Even for y'all that celebrate Christmas and do all that. I, I used to I, I didn't really sell it. I, I, I've never really celebrated Christmas like that. So I don't really know how all this stuff goes. I had one year um, where my father actually did put a tree in the house. He was he, uh, you know, was a Christian. But my mother was the one that took care of our spirituality. He was working two and a half jobs after my mom got sick and she was out the house. He did the Christmas thing one year. Right. So I've never. I've never really done Christmas and I didn't celebrate it because I felt like it was disrespect to mom in all honesty, but you know, he was trying to give us options so we could say we did it. So I guess I've celebrated Christmas before, but um, you know, and all the stuff that we're doing and we're talking about and all these holidays and things that everybody says that they must have um, fathers are way down on the list, even on days like Christmas, you know, mom's supposed to get the jewelry and the children are supposed to get the toys and daddy gets like, socks and like itchy sweaters. 
They're laughing at me, menacing on me. You know, but daddy gets like socks and itchy sweaters. Hey, Grand Rising, how you doing, Sister Mary? Hopefully you're feeling better. So daddy gets like these socks, these itchy sweaters, things like that. But everybody else is supposed to be, you know, breaded up, <laughs> right? Everybody's supposed to be else supposed to be in their own, in a sense, caked up and stuff, right? And they're supposed to have all these different things because we don't look heavily upon fathers. We don't really care about kings. We don't really care about kings' domains. It used to be some of y'all are some of y'all are are my elders, right? And I respect each one of you. And you guys could tell better than I can. How you doing, Sister Rhonda? You guys could probably tell people better than I ever could, right? That there used to be a time to where the king's domain was important. The house functioning was important because when dad came home after doing this and doing this and doing this, he was supposed to be able to come home to peace. Right? We become so effeminate as a culture, as a community. Hear what I'm saying, right? We become so, hello, how you doing, Henry? And thank you, Shoe Queen, for that, right? We become so messed up as a community because we've taken on other cultures. We become so, uh, look, I didn't say we become too womanlike because men can be masculine and feminine. Matter of fact, we are masculine and feminine. There's a balance to us as well. But we have become so effeminate and we have become so emasculated as a community that we don't even have it set up to where we give um, credit to men to the point to where, hey, we want this to be something that's for peace for you. If a man says, I'd like a man cave, we look at him as he's crazy. Why you need a man cave? Why you need this? But we need a powder room and we need to make sure the living room looks the way you want and your kitchen better be on point, right? And your garden better be on point. These are things we're supposed to provide and you better go shopping and you better get that hair done and them nails did and all those things. But your man says, hey, I'd like to have an area. Maybe his man cave doesn't have a pool table. Maybe it doesn't have television. Maybe he just wants a place where his books can be. Maybe he just wants a place where he can just flip over his, his laptop his MacBook, whatever he's using, and he can be able to just study. Maybe he wants a place where, like, I, I want you guys to see how important the domain is, right? Like, a lot of men, I'm trying to tell you, a lot of men, right, will, have you ever noticed that men will go sometimes, and um, especially now that they have phones, but they used to bring a newspaper, or whatever, anybody raised in the era where daddy went into the bathroom, and you'd be trying to figure out why in the world was dad in the bathroom so long? And then us as young men coming up, we'd be teenagers, thanks for the love ransom. And we all of a sudden, we start going in the bathroom and standing there a long time. And people always be thinking, we just trying to stay away, this and that, or what you doing in there so long? Maybe he has to, you know, go number two or something and he's unhealthy. And maybe there's some of that, right? But no, a lot of times he's going in there because he's trying to get away. He does not have a domain and he will turn the bathroom into his domain. And so you still don't honor your husband even after his passing. You left his man cave exactly how it is. Amen. You know, and that's part of healing, too. You know. And right now, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you have some things that are helping you even physically to be able to deal with the passing. Right. Because to lose a king to, is, is, is a big deal to lose anybody, a, a queen as well. Right. <laughs> thank, thank you, uh, Jake. Appreciate it. Right. You know, but these are these are real things that that men will go because they're trying to get a domain together. Right. These men are trying their hardest to get a domain together. We, we lack domains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to to create your own. And it helps you if he can be in the place of peace. I'm telling you. If you're, if you got, now look, I know not all men are out here working, doing what they're supposed to do, right? But I'm not gonna act like most of us are. I know that's the, 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 the game that they play, and they try to get you to believe that all of us are out here being lazy, and women are the only ones that are working, or if they're not working, women are just trying to get stuff off the system, and blah blah. I'm going to make the um, correct assumption that most of us are doing everything in our power to ensure that our families are doing well, right? to ensure that our families are doing well, right? Even if your man is hustling, guess who he's hustling for, <laughs> right? Right? Bev's Body Butter, great product. If you want more information about it, let us know. If you want more information about anybody that does anything in 
our community, let us know. Um, you know, but but we have this we have this thing where we do this thing where it's like we forget that even men who are out there working their behinds off this and that or whatever, and they come home and first thing is, whoo, take these children, Ooh, da, 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 blah blah blah. Look, Queens, we know you need a break too, right? Some of y'all are working just as hard, and even if you're working as a stay-at-home mother, sometimes you're working harder than what we are. I get it. I'm just trying to tell you that. We're, to, we're focusing on kings today, and kings are without domains, which means that if kings are without domains, there cannot be kingdoms. If kings feel like they don't have dominion, they're kingdoms. You said, how can you purchase it? Well, um, if you get in contact with me, I'll make sure I get in contact. Matter of fact, uh, I think Sister Beverly and Sister Barbara are both on here. So, um, Sister Barbara, if you would like... Uh, to at Shoe Queen. Shoe Queen would like to purchase some of um, Best Body Butter from y'all. So if you're still on, you can just contact her direct in the chat and y'all can con have some conversation. But um, if you want to get more information as far as phone number, things like that, because you probably don't want to put that stuff out here in public, just um, go to our main TikTok page. Um, go on there, click on where it says link tree. Find a way to be able to get in contact with us. And um, We'll make sure we give you the information to contact them. So, um, you know, you can do that right there um, and, and text us. It's our pleasure. Yeah. So just feel free to do that. Or if you want to DM us, um, the DMs I don't get to all the time as much as I'd like to. And today with it being Shabbat Shalom, it's probably easiest if you just go find the contact information. If you see the number on there, text us there. If you see the email, email us. Um, if you text it, I'll probably see it before I look at anything else. So just text the number that's on there. It's uh, 202 five nine nine seven three one two again that's two zero two five nine nine seven three one two again i say two zero two five nine nine seven three one two last time two zero two five nine nine seven three one two um and sister miko you got a, you got my information just go ahead and hit us up on messenger or something <laughs> we'll make sure that we get it to you amen um but shabbat shalom to everybody once again because today is pentecost we'll be dealing more with that on Zoom at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern New York time, 1 o'clock p.m. Central. Um, but today, right now, we're focusing on the king's domain. Amen. And thank you for supporting businesses. Um, you know, matter of fact, if you get in contact, I'll give you a list of businesses because there's a whole bunch of people here to do a lot of different things. And so we'll make sure that we get that to you. Amen. Um, so we have to start creating a domain for our kings. Your princes need places where they can learn to be kings. And once again, we have to have places that reward them to going towards kingdom. Because a lot of us are rewarded from for staying boys. You know, there's a group called Boys to Men, right? But a lot of us get rewarded for being boys to boys. Right? Little boys out here having sex, not realizing that sex is marriage, marriage is sex. And out here going ahead, getting girls pregnant or having soul ties or being told that they should be pimping or being told that, you know, um, you know, you know, using terms like pimping ain't easy, but somebody got to do it. Foolishness like that. Like we're doing that and we're not rewarded for that. Matter of fact, I'm telling you from personal experience. Now, look, I get it. I was a nerd and all these things, too, or at least what people would call a nerd. I'm kind of proud of it now and I'm glad I was. But, you know, um, you get called a nerd and foolish and all these different things. And you're you're a square or whatever, you know, whatever generation you come with. We had different words for it. But, you know, you're a simp, all these different things because you want to treat women with respect because you want to wait until um, until you get married before you even consider laying down with somebody because you want to make sure that you get yourself in order before you start trying to holler at all these different girls or whatever but we but we so you you don't get rewarded what is the environment when your child goes to school i promise you that that school makes fun of your child for trying to wait to be uh, you know to try and to keep their virginity Right. I guarantee you <laughs> that that they that they are legit told that they ain't nothing because they're trying to keep their virginity. That they get made fun of. I guarantee you that in your churches, all they're going to say to them is be a virgin, but they have nothing to reward them or no domain for them to be in that rewards their virginity. What do you mean? OK. If people give high fives and stuff and they go to a school just for acting like a lot of these cats out here to be acting like they be having sex in high school and stuff like that, they lie. 
Like, let me just put that out there. I, I didn't realize that I was an adult, but you heard all these guys talking about this and that and sexual experiences, and you listen and you think back and you're like, wait a minute, they ain't know what they were talking about. <laughs> right? You were like, they was just making that up. They have no, they had no clue what they were talking about. And I hope that's what they weren't do, were doing, because if they were, the woman definitely wasn't having an awesome experience, um, which a lot of guys don't care about because they're not kings, they're not husbands, they only care about themselves. A husband actually wants to make sure that his wife would enjoy the experience. That being said, though, you know, because, um, you know, people don't want to go there. But, you know, like, you know, you, that's part of your training. You know, it's it's very interesting that we don't do those things. Sorry, Betty, you said um, you just taught your son how much it was valued and it mattered. Um, it was a gift you don't just give away. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a you know, my, my mother, because queens can train us on kingdom, too. Right. My mother, she she gave me a strict rule. I didn't comprehend what she was saying. She really didn't teach me what marriage was and didn't really teach me a lot of stuff. But I saw my mother and father. Right. Until my mother passed away. And I saw my father and I've seen my father still stay faithful. Hasn't gone on the date. 20 years. My mom's been gone. And I, I, I recognize when I talk about my my mother, mother and see her life and things like that. She would say things to me like, don't ever bring any girl over this house unless she's your wife i didn't know what a wife was but she was telling me that when i was six years old thank you um king appreciate that right i didn't know what that meant but i've never brought a woman over my house i've never brought a girl over my house unless she has been my wife amen yeah because no one can measure up you know they got a hard thing to measure up to that that, that woman was powerful and great um you know so she taught me that and guess what I was rewarded for? In my house, I was rewarded for it. See, look, I need you to comprehend. See, a lot of women don't like when I say something like this, but let me say it like this. Um, my, I, there's a problem that we need to deal with that we don't like it. And we don't like this. We don't like to admit that men play games. Now, that usually has a negative context to it, right? But we don't recognize that that's important for you to recognize, sisters, that men play games. Men like video games. We're now we're in the video game generation. As a matter of fact, men play video games more than what children used to play. But men love games. Why is that important to recognize? And we're going to talk about a king's domain. Because games have very strict rules. If I press a button, that control is always supposed to be the same, right? If we know that there's levels, there's level one, level two, level three, level four. If I put a cheat code in to cheat, right, then everybody recognizes that if I'm cheating in the game, that score is not to be something that's looked at as great as if I had not cheated. Yeah, that's a word, right? I need you to comprehend, right? That games have, oh yeah, you have to play play uh, the game to live. Yeah, sure. I need you to also comprehend games have lives. There's a certain amount of lives, right? So I have to do this within a certain amount of time when there's a certain way and I cannot do things that would kill me off, right? I need you to comprehend that. Sorry for the wind. Hopefully it's not too windy, right? But games have rules. Games have rules rules and so i as a man i as a king how you doing brother tj as a king i'm looking for something that has rules i've been raised playing games see ladies you played but you didn't really play games like you played with barbie right i don't know what your version of barbie was maybe you didn't have barbie but you had dolls you had barbie you did tea <coughs> things like that right maybe you didn't i know there's tomboys and things like that right i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to make everybody have to fit the stereotype but let's be honest most of us recognize that little girls they were thinking about marriage earlier you know why you were thinking about marriage earlier you thought you were thinking about marriage the reality was was that you were playing with barbie right let's just use barbie as an example i know there's Polly pockets out there i know there's kid sisters out there i know there's a lot of different things that are out there right some of y'all had cabbage patch children or cabbage patch kids and all those different things or whatever right but you had stuff to where 
you were always doing, you thought you were preparing yourself for marriage. Little girls were talking about when I walk down the aisle, this is what I'm going to wear and stuff. <laughs> like little boys weren't thinking about that, right? We were like cooties, <laughs> you know, cooties. We want to do that. Little girls were talking about let's play house, you know. And if we played house, you know, it was very weird and odd to us when we felt uncomfortable, you know. But but you when you played with Barbie, let's just use Barbie once again. Barbie is sitting up here and Barbie has everything. Barbie has her own house. You got to see the feminist perspective. Barbie has her own house. Barbie has her own clothes. Barbie has her own closet. Barbie has her own car. Barbie has her own kin. Okay. Barbie has her own kin. Did you catch that? And so Barbie has her own kin. And kin wears the accessories that Barbie wears. Matter of fact, kin is an accessory to Barbie. You said Barbie's not allowed at your house. The halls are fine. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just saying, regardless, you we can put, we can talk about black Barbies. We can talk about the, what I, I, at all honesty, they made it so hard to find the black dolls and stuff. And little girls don't even like the black dolls. And I don't even know the names of the black dolls. I'm just being honest. I feel kind of embarrassed. I used to. You know, I don't really have little girls anymore, you know, but I used to. But like Barbie had everything and Ken was an accessory. And here's what would happen is that is that Ken, when Barbie and Ken spoke, guess what happened, ladies? You always hear what I'm saying. This is the king's domain. We don't know how king's domain works because you've never been taught it. Right. When Barbie and Ken were talking, who was in control of the conversation? G.I. <laughs> Joe. Right. When Barbie and Kim were talking, who was in charge of the conversation? Barbie was, but in essence, really, you were. Because who was Barbie in con under control of? Barbie was under your control. So in your mind, the way that the accessory name Ken worked was that you playing Barbie would talk to Ken and whatever Barbie said. Ken would automatically know what was going on. which So basically, Ken could read Barbie's mind. Now, now you take that same mentality and you go and your husband is trying to figure out, well, you're, you know, hopefully you've got a husband. Some of us aren't doing husbands anymore, right? But your husband trying to trying to figure out what's going on, he says, what's going on? And you don't say anything. You say, everything's fine, but you know something's not fine, but you're waiting to see if he'll find out what it is on his own because that's what Ken used to do. Ken always knew what Barbie was thinking, but that was because it was all in your mind. See, in games that we play, you can't just assume. And when men play games, you can't assume that you can read the other person's mind. Thanks for being part of the community, All Brown, right? But but when you played with Barbie, you were taught that you thought that was how relationships were. In your mind, Barbie could say whatever she wanted to Ken, and she never had to say, Ken, how are you feeling? Because Ken felt however Barbie wanted him to feel because Barbie was in your mind, so was Ken. They groomed us for this. They got you ready to be in a position to where you would marry somebody and you would start talking to them and you and he would say, hold up, I, I disagree with that. And you would say, you disagree. How come you disagree? Well, I, I disagree because I don't see it like that. But in your mind, Ken always, dis Ken always agreed. Right? Ken always agreed. He always agreed. You never had a problem. And you were raised with that. And you were raised with other little girls, right? And these little girls became teenagers. And then they, right? And they went through high school. And they even went to colleges. And you guys would get in these groups and still do. You go out to the clubs. Or you go kick it. Or you go to the mall. Or whatever. and Or you get on the phone. And you had these long conversations. And you talk about these men as if they're accessories. I'm not saying everybody. But let's be honest, this happens quite a bit, okay? Please don't be offended. I'm just trying to tell you how this works. That you've been taught that the, that the king is an accessory, but, but if he's an accessory, he's not a king. And if he's an accessory, you don't believe he deserves a domain, which means you won't give it to him. And if he's not a king, you won't believe that he has a mission to be under, right? Because you don't sub-mansion, you don't submit to a man, you submit to a mission. And the king's ultimate mission is to make sure anybody in his domain is taken care of. But you don't look for people who have domains because you don't believe that people deserve domains. I'm not saying you won't find somebody 
that has a domain or they won't find you. But I'm telling you, it's going to be really weird for you because a lot of you have not. Thank you, Sister Miko. A lot of you have not found kings. You have found people that lack domains and you have found people that are afraid to say that they should have a domain. And you and, and a lot of us uh, require um, because we've gone out with little boys and never gone out with a king. We have a problem even looking for a domain. We don't want a domain. I got my own domain. I got my own clothes. I got my own car. I got my own food. I got this and that, right? So we're not even looking for somebody with a mission. We don't want a mission. Matter of fact, I've got my own mission. And so you better be in submission, which he should be because Ephesians 5.21 tells us to submit one to another. So yeah, you want him to be in sub submitted to your mission, but he better not have a domain that requires you to be submitted to what? his mission and your missions become one and the same because now as a king he can operate with you as being a queen because in our culture kings are not in front kings are not behind kings are not above kings are not beneath but kings are beside we're talking about a kingdom like king's domain we're revisiting this context this concept this set this precept because we're in a position where we don't comprehend kingdoms we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and remember principalities mean the origin of things and also means the kingdom of things which means that you're talking about a kingdom origin what is the origin of the kingdom what is a kingdom supposed to supply you're in a capitalist society says that they're anti-kingdom but wait a minute you know a president is considered to be the same as the head of a state and a monarchy and a totalitarian they're all considered to be heads of state heads of state are people over kingdoms but that's a puppet king that president that you have because that president is under corporations the united states itself is a corporation on paper Right, 28 USC 300215A. If you read the documentation, you will find that they are puppets because the definition of capitalism, Google it right now if you'd like to while I'm talking to you, right? Or if you want to get off and Google what I say, but look up the definition of capitalism. Allow me to say what it is first and then go check to see if I'm correct. And if you want to come back after that, or if you want to type it up or go to another device, right? But look up, or some of you can even put, you know, TikTok down, I guess, lower in the screen on the live, right? But look up what a um, the definition of capitalism is. The definition of capitalism is defined as a system in which politics and economics are used to control trade and industry. That trade and industry is wielded by private corporations and not the state. The word state means country, which means that corporations own the country. Corporations have the power. It is the prisons that tell people how many people they're supposed to arrest. Your state goes to look for people to arrest when the system, when the, when the prisons say we don't have enough prisoners. And if they don't get them enough prisoners, they will go ahead and lock them up. So they are, in essence, kingdoms gallivanting around under the cloak and tunic and auspices of what? Of capitalists. But capitalists, the people that are on top, they own you. They are kings. They own the domain. They even own you. They enslave you. 13th Amendment citizens. 14th Amendment citizenship. Being a citizen of the United States rather than a non-citizen national or freedmen, or more, or indigenous, whatever one you want to try and put on there. Oligarchic capitalism, uh, a democratic republic, a republican oligarchy, whichever one you want to put on it, that's what we fall on. Right? Exactly, all caps. Like, this is what we are. So you're in a domain that is actually under kings and queens, because in capitalism, whoever has the most capital is now the king or queen. Problem with that is, though, is why... They're saying you who have um, the people that are under the most capital or have the most capital are the kings and queens. They're telling you, hey, stop talking about kingdoms and queens. All kings are bad. No, your kings are bad. See, this is when your culture has to pop up. No, no, no. All kings are bad. All kings have been destructed. Kings and queens do this or whatever, man. Mansa Musa took care of me. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Mansa Musa, he took care of us. Divide took care of us. Salaman took care of us. Even Salama, who did the, now, he was still technically just trying to take over Yerushalayim. And I'm talking about the Salaman during, or Solomon during, you know, the uh, um, the Crusades. But they took care of their people. They were supposed to. They had to. 
I'm not saying that they are perfect human beings, but we don't we don't go through this thing to where like King Henry VIII literally starts a whole Protestant thing where he makes himself the Pope over Protestantism and starts it because he wants to go ahead and kill his wives and the Pope won't let him. That's not our <laughs> and that's not my culture. You see what I'm saying? And so culturally, we have this conversation about kings and queens and people don't recognize what's going on. See, I as a king am responsible for anything in my domain. I am responsible. I am accountable for it. This is why we can't call some of these pastors. And look, I'm a pastor myself, but let's, real is real. Right is right. Some of these pastors out here who are trying to tell you and I that like they are kings in the kingdom. They are queens in the kingdom or queens in the queendom, whichever you want to call it. And they are making millions of dollars. Not mad at that part. But if you're making millions, better not be nobody in your congregation that's sitting up there living off of um, living off dog food. And I'm not telling you what I'm thinking about. I'm telling you what I know, what I've seen, what I've heard. I'm telling you that that's why people have left your churches. Because they're tired of seeing that. Right. People who lead, want to lead in the society, not interested in taking care of anyone but themselves. Right. And also, too, it's it, is it not interesting that the leaders who only care about themselves are the leaders that want to be over people. But the people, but the leaders who, who make people better are the ones who take who lead their environment. See, you we are not called as kings to be over people. We are called to be over environments. This is why, sisters, can I say something? And this is annoying to you, I know, but because you're so used to somebody else's culture and you're used to being a strong independent woman well, once again if you know about willie lynch syndrome 1712 willie lynch letter you'll recognize that you didn't become strong independent woman until they took your man out of his position and he no longer had a domain that's when you they, they said per, specifically strategically they created this thing for you to become strong independent because you, nobody is really independent there's no such thing as somebody who is an individual without a society, and there's no such thing as a society without individuals, which means that interdependence is the only reality. Nobody is truly dependent. If you are truly dependent on somebody, you are somebody that will not get far in life. And if you are truly independent, you are somebody who will not get far in life. You said the church doesn't help if you don't tithe regularly. Some churches don't help if you don't tithe regularly, sure. Some churches don't help at all. Some churches don't help even if you tithe regularly. I know I know people who die and they tithe except for the last two months of their life. They in the hospital, not really take, able to do what they do. And because they didn't tithe last two months, people like myself who you know, who don't have the numbers and stuff and don't have the money. We had to figure out ways to make sure that they got buried somehow. Exactly, Sister Bree. Yeah. The qualifications to see even if you if you want to know if somebody's getting to heaven or not. Yashua told you the qualifications feeding people, clothing people, sheltering people, et cetera, right? But we don't have a domain. And you got all these pastors. I don't care if you're a millionaire. Be a millionaire. One day, heck, maybe I'll be a millionaire. I'm I'm not tripping off it. I know I'm going to be well taken care of and my family will be, right? But if I become a millionaire, that's great. But I bet not be a millionaire and somebody who's attached to us can't eat. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I bet not be a billionaire and somebody out there doesn't have a home. Salah. Right. And this is because we don't look for kings to kick like watch this. This is how king's domain work. Do you know that kings have domains so that they can make sure that their people have domains? Did you know that? That a true king will be trained to make sure that his people have domains and get domains for themselves. That's why there are kings and then there are lords. That's how kingdoms work. But we don't study monarchy enough to be able to recognize that. But there are kings and there are lords. So if somebody's giving something to us, if somebody on a regular basis gives something to us, bare minimum, we check in on them. And if you need something, even if we ain't got that much, we're going to give you something. Right? Even if we ain't got that much, we'll give, we'll sow a seed, do something, because we want to make sure that we're sowing something to your life. If we can't give you the money right now, we can give you the classes to be able to say, hey, this is how you invest. This is how you do this. This is how you become sovereign. This is how the law works. This is what we're going to do. We're working on getting the land so that bare minimum, at least for a little while while we're building on it, hey, at least we got some food we can give you all something. Some of y'all are opening up your land to us. and We're working out right now on the calendar. How can we travel from this to this to make sure that we're ensuring that we can plant stuff and do this or whatever right like like we're we're looking at doing all of these different things for the community because kings 
work uh, have domains you've been given a domain to make sure that others have domains if you want domains you better make sure you have kings that have domains and teach these kings what it is to give it is better to give than it is to receive it is better see the word receive on the end of that is the word right you're going off of the prefix not realizing the prefix is not the word you should part of the word you should focus on because re just means to repetitively do you need to figure out what it is to see to give Right. Give, seed, and it shall be given unto thee. Receive. And like I was saying earlier, when you come into a king's court, when you're supposed to bring a gift. If you come before a king or queen, you bring a gift. Why? Because whatever I give to a king or queen, they're supposed to give me something greater in return. They're supposed to give me something greater in return. Thank you, wise. Appreciate it. And Shabbat Shalom to everybody. We treat this as Shabbat because today is Pentecost. Uh, today is Shabbat. So Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Thank you so much. Right. But these people, we are all what? We are all kings. Right. Or at least I won't say we are all kings. We should become kings. I'm focusing on kings. I know there's queens today, but hear what I'm saying. That's why I'm telling you that a king has to be in touch with this queen. A king has to be trained to be with this queen. A king should be raised to be able to take care of his queen. In our culture, from ages zero to three, you teach a king. He's on his way to becoming a king. He's a king and a child simultaneously. When he's born, he's already born as a king, but he's not ready for his kingdom. So he gets in training. So ages zero to three, you teach him he is a boy. Ages three, uh, four to six, you teach him. Uh, or you wean him from his mama ages seven to nine he is his daddy's apprentice ages 10 to 12 we give him extreme education um ages um 13 to 15 you train him what it is to be an adult male ages 16 to 18 you train him what it is to be a husband um ages 19 to 21 you train him what it is to be a um a father then you give him his inheritance you let him take the lessons that you've given him he does those things he finds a wife his wife goes to prepare herself he comes back home he adds on to the property that you already have that add-on is called a mansion he builds a mansion that's why in my father's house there are many mansions and no man knows the day to the hour because the father watches over his son he knows what he's supposed to provide he knows what his wife's going to need he knows what his grandbaby's going to need he does all those things and he puts them on and then he says what he says okay now boy go, or you know now king now you're really ready for your kingdom. I, as a king, am saying that you're ready for your kingdom. You've attached yourself to this kingdom so that we have generational wealth going on and you have generational help. And any kind of time I see a generational curse since we're attached and living with each other, I can tell you that that's something you don't want to do. Cool. Bring your queen in. Y'all become one. That when you become one, that is called marriage. Once you are married, now produce fruit. And we repeat the process over and over and over again, building upon a culture where we live together. That is a king's domain. If I have my own domain, my son can build upon that, which I already have. But if he does not have a domain and environment, if I don't have a domain or an environment that allows me to teach my son, now, I'm in pro now I got a problem because our communities are based off of our marriages. How important is a king's domain? A king's domain can be the 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 thing that allows your king to never have to work a day. I'm sorry, to never have to have a job a day, but work every day. What do I mean by that? You job, you toil, and you've been taught, hey, get these boys out here. Make sure that a real man, he has a job. A real man, he toils all day. A real man, he breaks his back. A real man, he slaves over a stove. A real man, he does this. A real man, he does that but he has no ability to have an environment to where he can build generational wealth. He has no place of, when I say wealth, I'm not just talking about your finances. I'm talking about the way he eats. I'm talking about the, how much sleep he gets. I'm talking about how much peace he provides. I'm talking about how much he studies um, and makes sure his spirituality is great. Right. I'm talking about how much he knows of himself. I'm talking about did he get a chance to be homeschooled or had to go to somebody else? And you were hoping and praying that he would just get a great enough education to be able to get a job where he would toil for somebody else who taught him how to toil for them rather than be able to be in his work for himself. I'm saying that we have no domain. We have no environment. And yet we're talking about kingdom. How do you talk about kingdom without domain? That's why we've been asking people, help us with Yah's land project. Help us to do this. Let's find ways to fundraise. Even if you're doing stuff, people, Minister Tamar is out there putting out shirts and stuff, trying to get back in touch with Brother Jermaine. Um, that's on me, you know, but trying to get back in touch with him, make sure we get that stuff so we can have some of those shirts. Trying to bring back some of the old Kofi of 40 stuff that we had or whatever. Whatever it is, we're trying to do things. Why? Because it's about domain. It's not just because we're trying to say, see, look, we got this. No, if you don't have your own domain, if you don't have your own place to reside, if you don't have a place that is private and not public, 
you cannot talk about developing kings. And if you will not develop kings, you will never have protection queens. Because it is a king's responsibility to protect his queen. When it says in the Proverbs 31, we talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, and it talks about, um, when it talks about the Proverbs 31 woman, and it specifically speaks to um, her being a weaker vessel, that word weak there is actually talking about her being delicate. Hey mama, how you doing? Mama Yara on here, right? When it talks about the woman being the weaker vessel, it's actually talking about her being the more precious vessel. She's more expensive. And a lot of men don't even like to treat their women as if they are precious or expensive, but it's because we have a domain that tells somebody else that we're supposed to work hard, this and that, and she's not supposed to be precious. We're not supposed to build her up. Why she always got to get her hair done? Why she always got to get her nails done? Why she always gets to do this? Why she always did? Because she's more precious. Your baby's going to be in that. Why would you not treat? I'm sorry, I don't mean to say that as if you are not a human being, but hopefully you get what I'm saying. Your baby's going to be in her. Your seed does not exist if it's not for her. She's precious. She'll be the first teacher. If she's angry when she's pregnant, guess what your baby's learning? They learn how to be angry. She's precious. If she's sick the whole time she's pregnant, guess what your baby's going to be dealing with the whole time? She's it's going to be sick. Right? If she's mistreated the whole time, guess what your baby's going to have a propensity to do? They're going to go towards people that mistreat them. This is stuff that we can actually accurately pinpoint, even if you don't believe in the Bible, whatever. Scientifically speaking, whichever version of science you want to use, because science is just based off of culture. Go look up statistics. If the wife is mistreated during the pregnancy, guess what usually happens to the baby when they get to be an adult? We would call that a generational curse. If you want to call that symptoms or DNA memory or whatever you want to call it, we're speaking on the same thing. She is precious. She is more precious. She has more value than any rubies, any kind of money, any kind of gem you can try to put on her. A king knows that. It is his requirement to make sure that he takes care of his queen. But queens, hear me, if you will not give him a domain, how can he protect you if he has no domain? This is going to be a tough one today. What they used to say in church is tight, but it's right. <laughs> it's going to be tight war. I promise you, it's right. If a king does not have a domain, where does he keep his queen safe? If I don't have a domain, where do I keep mama safe? I'm going to keep mama safe and she I ain't got no place to make sure that she's safe. If shooting breaks out, how do, if I have no land to make sure, hey, y'all can come on here. We got weapons to protect ourselves. How do I keep my community safe? We out here in somebody else's community. I've talked about this before. Salah. Yeah, let's let's let that sit for a second. Salah. Right. Pause and think about it. That's what Salah means, just in case you don't know. Aman. I've talked about this before. Amen. And it shows how much. Yeah, exactly. Chill pill. Shows how much these things have transformed and gotten away from what they're supposed to be. I want you to think about this. I talked about this before. We talk about black community. When you say black community, is your black community actually a black community? Ponder on that. I don't even want you to answer. I want you to ponder on that. I'm going to fix it for you in a second. So you see the foundation of what I'm talking about. But you hear all the time, we got to take care of the black community. When you say, hear somebody talk about the black community, do they really mean the black community? Thank you, mom. Appreciate you. Right. When somebody says black community, do they really mean black community? If somebody says Israelite community, do they really mean Israelite community? If they say more community, Moorish community, do they really mean Moors? What I'm trying to say is this, is that when they say black, I'm not even going into is black a color or is black a, a nation or I'm not even going there. I want you to comprehend that if we're talking about a diaspora, when they say black community, they're talking about places that black people don't own which means that it's not a black community because you don't own it. Can I, can I make sure that you get that? Can I, I'm gonna say it again. If you live in a black community, but everything there is not owned by you, it means it's not a black community, right? <laughs> Period. If somebody says white community, and I know we're going by social constructs, but if somebody says white community, they mean we own this. 
If somebody says Chinese community, they, they mean we own this. Heck, if somebody says indigenous community, they're saying we own this sometimes, depending on where you are in the world, right? If somebody says this is a Spanish community, this is a Mexican community, this is a um, Jewish community, right? We don't even have to, we can, we can break down the social constructs and go into the different tribes, et cetera. They mean that we own this. But when somebody says this is a black community, we don't mean we own it. Um, we're all over the place. Legit. Last week we went to, um, <laughs> we went to, in seven days, we were in four different cities. I mean, we traveled a bunch, but we were in four different cities, been like 50 hours on the road. So we're always all over the place. Uh, we just came through, uh, we just went through Atlanta. We just went through, um, I forget where, lower in Illinois. Then we were up in Chicago. Then we were in Detroit. Now we're in the DMV. And um, in the middle, sometime in the middle of this week, we'll be going back through the Carolinas. And then from there, I'm not even sure where we go next. Right. But wherever we go, we wherever we, we wherever when we hear people talking about black, it's hard to deal with the black community because most people talking about black community don't even want to admit the fact that, you know, we don't own. We out here telling people about black rights and help the black neighborhood. You don't have a black neighborhood. You know, like the, it gets funny. You remember they were talking about reparations in North Carolina. Was It, it was North Carolina, I believe, it was some city in North Carolina. Maybe it was the state. I don't know. But they were talking about, oh, yeah, we're going to get reparations. Everybody was all excited about reparations is going to happen. And North Carolina is going to show the way, right? One of the southern states is going to show the way in reparations. The same state that's taking land from the Gullah Geechee people all the time. But they were going to, you know, set things straight. If you study what they were going to do, they weren't going to give you land. They were not going to give you 40 acres and the vehicle to make sure that you could tend the land. They were not going to do that. What they did was they said, we're going to invest in your business and we'll have ownership in your business, but we'll give you money to run it. And so we'll basically split the cost. We'll split the, I'm not, not, I'm not even split the cost. I'm sorry. We'll front most of the bill to get you started and then you'll pay us back and we'll both own this together, which means that you don't own it anyways. That's not reparations. It was Asheville. Okay. But that's not that's not reparations, is it? By definition, that's why I keep saying you got to figure out self f reparations. If people who've been promising you something for the longest time says that they can't give you something, but they give it to Ukraine, they give it to Jews. Not not mad at it. I'm just telling you, right? They'll give it to Jews. They'll give it to Ukraine. They'll give it to the Japanese people, the Japanese people that they held in prison and that they bombed. Still giving. I think until like the 1990s. Still, we're giving families reparations that were connected to the people who lost their lives or lost property or whatever in Japan when they dropped those bombs. Right. But they don't have anything for you. At some point, you got to say, OK, we've got to have what our own domain, because trying to ask somebody. Uh, Malcolm X said it like this. One of the strongest men I've ever known. Of, right. I didn't know him personally, but one of the most strongest men I've ever known of. Malcolm X said it like this. He said, um. He said, "When you, if you have to ask, right, if you have to ask the person who hates you to employ you, you're in bad shape. <laughs> right? If you got to ask the person who has shown, and somebody, somebody will say, hate is a strong word. Yeah, it is. It's a very strong word. <laughs> but I've seen hate from my people. And if you have to keep asking the person who kidnaps you to take care of the kid. If you have to ask the kidnapper to take care of the kidnappee, you're in bad shape. But we keep doing that same thing. I thank you for being part of Community Rose. We keep going through the same exercise. We keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And we want to label it as anything other than insanity. And if somebody like myself comes by and says, hey, you know what? I think I'm done with ins the insanity of waiting for somebody who's shown that they don't like me, that they're going to all of a sudden start taking care of me. And somebody says, you're a reverse racist. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you speak about racism? How dare you talk about that you should have your own? How dare you? You are a black nationalist. Okay, If that's what I am, I wear it with pride because you called Malcolm X the same thing. How dare you? How dare you? You're a communist. Hey, I wear it with pride. That's what you call Martin Luther King Jr. 
Oh yeah, I don't. I I read exactly what you said. All these people out here who are talking about that they, um, you know, were, um, they they actually you know got all these people. I actually lived when King was around, and King, you know, was somebody that I actually respect. I know enough about King to know what you thought about him because I saw the census. You know, they had a census. You know, you know, they had a census. We can actually go back and read what y'all thought about us back there as a community. So maybe you were one of the few. But you know what Martin Luther King Jr., the year before he died, 1967, you know they did a census about him. And they asked some white and some black folk, too, were busy telling you by a heavy majority saying that they thought that he was going about things wrong. They thought that Martin Luther King Jr., not Malcolm X, Martin, Malcolm X is already dead at this point. They said that they thought that Martin Luther King Jr. was asking for too much too soon. What was he asking for? He said he wanted white and black children to hold hands. He wanted black people to have jobs, even if it started at the grocery store level. And he wanted us to be able to get past having two Americas. But that's why he started saying stuff like even before then in the 60s, 65, he started saying stuff like, I feared that I brought my um, people into a burning house. Right, yeah, hindsight of 2020. You said I don't have enough gray in my beard. What? Because when you get when you when when you get old, you're supposed to be somebody that's not healthy. <laughs> so you're supposed to have gray. If you're healthy, your hair stays black or longer. That's facts. So, but yeah, you know what? I'm cool with I'm still a baby. You know, this year I turned 40, so I'm still a baby. But yeah, I don't plan on, I don't know, with the pen, I can't wait until I have gray because people like you will actually say that I'm worthy of listening to. But, you know, usually people with gray hair actually, you know, who are mature enough, they actually listen to people, um, you know, but, but, you know, I can't wait to actually see some. When I see some, I'm not going to be that dude that, that dyes his hair. You guys can see, I don't really care about what people think about that. But Martin Luther King Jr. in 68, when he died, when he was killed, in 68, when King was killed, Guess what they did? They had another census. Guess what they said? A lot of people said that he deserved what he got. I'm not making that up. I can read. You know, I can read. You know, I can read. <laughs> Thank you, brother TJ. <laughs> I appreciate this. I appreciate that. One day I'll be able to make the sacrifice for somebody else, <laughs> um, right? But this is, you know, this is this is we're we're not willing to go there. We're not willing to, to have this conversation, right? People don't want to talk about this and be honest about this. Like you, like that's why Jane Elliott started. You know, that's why Jane Elliott started speaking out in public, right? And that's a queen for the person that was saying only black people can be queens or thought that we were doing it. Jane Elliott is, some, is a queen that must be protected at all costs. And I don't even agree with everything Jane Elliott says, but that's a queen, <laughs> okay? That's a queen. If you don't know who I'm talking about, do some research and, and learn of her. That's a queen. But she didn't start speaking out in public and getting them death threats and everything that she was willing to do and having her babies be threatened and stuff. She didn't go start going deal, dealing with that until she saw King die. She came home. She had a whole exercise. She um, had... Um, her children, I think she taught first grade or kindergarten, something like that every year. And she would always teach them this. Um, and she actually dealt with um, children that had, you know, um, health or mental health challenges, basically. And um, and, and that had um, learning disabilities, things of that nature. And um, back then, you know, and she always got great results. All these people, they would say, had mental health issues and um, educational challenges and things. All of them turned out to be extremely well off. So she was, she's an excellent educator and she would do this thing where she would build a teepee and I forget what the tribe is, but she would go through this exercise and they would actually say what the tribe said about humanity and they would build the teepee up and they would do that for about a week. So she's getting ready to get all the material together and get the teepee together and do all those different things. Right. And, um, she, and I'm, um, Hey, how you doing? Sister, our uh, minister like Sharon. And so she's getting all this stuff together. You said that she believe in reparations? Yes. <laughs> right? By the way, I believe in reparations, but I'm not tripping off of reparations because at the end of the day, when you talk about reparations, reparations, they ain't giving it to you. So what are you going to do to make sure that you have your own? Like, get your own. Right? That's that's what people like um, 
Wow, I'm forgetting his name. The guy who bought like who wrote the book like on powernomics or power economics or whatever, Dr. Cloud Anderson. Right? Dr. Cloud Anderson told us that in 1865, right? Hear what I'm about to say. Right? Well, let me finish with Jane Elliott. I'm not gonna let us get off track too much. <laughs> I already did let us get off. All right, but I'll, I'll come back to it. But Dr. Cloud Anderson, hopefully somebody can remind me. If you can remember, somebody just remember Dr. Anderson. If I come back, I say I can't remember what I was talking about. Please somebody say Dr. Anderson in the in the comments if I say that, okay? Um, but Jane Elliott, she went in to teach like she's supposed to, or she's getting ready to go and teach like she's supposed to. She gets a call. Her sister's on the phone. Um, her sister says, um, um, you know, are, are you okay? Did you hear the news? And she says, who did they kill this time? Because they were killing so many black people. Right? Right? 19, 1967 is supposed to be known as the summer of love. Right? But they were killing so many black people in 67, 68. That, she, that Jane's first response is, who did they kill this time? And then she said, you need to sit down. Jane sits down. She says, okay. They killed Martin Luther King Jr. And she basically collapses. Right? She said that she felt like he was the ultimate good. That's, did he have some flaws? Of course. But she felt like in her mind, he was the ultimate good. He was purity. He represented something that was special. And they killed him and took him. So from that point on, she decided that she would start teaching about who he was because she came into class the next day or came into school the next day and tried to, you know, go about things, get herself together, et cetera. And she said that it was the teachers in the teacher's lounge that got her to start really thinking about this. Why? Because the teachers in the teacher's lounge, who she was waiting for them to be like, man, this is terrible. Can you believe what happened? This and that. They not only didn't care that he died, they were making fun of it. They were saying that N-word deserved what he got. They were saying he was asked for too much too soon. Same stuff they put on the census in 1967. The same people that would write the census later on in 1968 and say, this is, you know, we're glad that he got what he got. Right. Are the same people that she saw behind closed doors who were teaching children, the next generation. And they were busy saying how great it was to see that he had died. So I remember. I can literally remember, right, we were dismembered, we were cut off from it, but now we've remembered it. We put it back together. Right. And not going off of his story that dismembers what actually happened, but the story that remembers what actually happened. And I can remember. Right. I can remember. I can put it back together. That wait a minute, y'all didn't like him back then. Y'all didn't like Martin Luther King Jr. back then. So don't tell me that you don't respect what I'm saying, but you respect what he was saying. He was talking about the same thing. He was a pastor too. Preaching the gospel, preaching the good news. And was saying that the good news is that he should be treated like you. And you thought it was okay to kill him. So much so that I, I can remember, I can put back history together. So much so that up until 1992, that, that everybody in America, at least all the states, weren't even willing to celebrate his birthday. <clears throat> Some of us forget that. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about Malcolm in a second. That's why I mentioned Malcolm. And I've talked about Malcolm some already and quoted some of his stuff. We, we quote him. I find myself to be probably more Malcolm than Martin, but I respect both. <clears throat> right. And they respected each other. Malcolm actually got killed uh, the week the week after he basically went to visit Martin Luther King Jr. So you'll actually see that a lot of this stuff is always intertwined, you know, but finishing that up, it wasn't until 1992. I believe Arizona, of course, um, was the last state to even say they would celebrate his born day. even though it's not really his born day. Right? You, you, have, you have to recognize what's going on. You have to remember. Things have been dismembered. They've been cut off. We got to remember. We got to put this thing back together. Right? Dr. J uh, or uh, Jane Elliott. J-A-N-E Elliott. Oh, the other guy. Dr. Cloud Anderson. C-L-A-U-D-E. So Dr. Cloud Anderson is somebody that we want to talk about reparations. He told you, you need to be careful about worrying about them and start making sure. Now, if you want to fight for reparations, he fights for reparations too. But he said, you stop, need to stop being so hyper-focused on them. Why? And when I say them, I'm talking about this United States corporation 
to give you what you deserve while they're giving everybody else. Remember, they gave reparations to slave owners. When the Emancipation Proclamation came out in 1862, still had three more years of, of, of war to fight. They made sure that they gave reparations to Maryland slave owners. To Maryland slave owners. Right? They did that to what? To Maryland slave owners. They had no problem giving reparations to slave owners. Lincoln had no problem helping to come up with the 13th Amendment that says that, hey, we can still lock them up. They just got to, we just can't lock them up because they're black. We got to create slave. We got to create these new laws, rather, <clears throat> so that they can go to prison and we'll put them back on the same plantation. Now we'll just pay, pay the prisons, right? And then we'll still allow the slave owners to make money. They'll make less money. They'll give some of that money to the prisons and the prisons will become the new thing for the, the new kind of, uh, <clears throat> the new type of corporation on the scene that has power, excuse me. Right? So, so you've got to begin to have, once again, a king's domain. This is pathetic. Okay. Well, hello to you if that's your way of saying hello. Um, so you got to deal with a domain. You must go look for your domain. When you have people that do the whole victim versus victor thing, you must look for your domain. Right? Dr. Cloud Anderson, he told us in 1865, this is facts. In 1865, Black people had 0.5% of the wealth. Guess how much percentage we have today? 0.5% of the wealth in America was, was black owned. 1865. That's when everything was supposed to be better, correct? That was supposed to be the end of slavery, even though slavery is still allowed by the 13th Amendment. You just got to get arrested first. People still pick cotton every day at gunpoint with people on horseback. Same thing. Slave patrolmen were the same badge as police officers. Same thing. But in 1865, 0.5% of the wealth in America was black. Guess how much wealth in America is owned today by black people today? Guess, guess how much today, guess how much? Anybody got a guess? How much percentage of the wealth in America is black owned? Somebody said 1%. Okay. Somebody said 0 0.01. Said LeBron is a billionaire. That's one person. <laughs> right yes exactly um i couldn't see what the first three characters of what you're using but i guess judah israelite you got it correctly it is now 0.5 percent which means that the wealth in america hadn't changed from 1865 until today And we do that sometimes if we're not careful. I'm not saying you're doing it. I'm just saying if we're not careful, we'll be like, oh, well, you know, this, this person's a billionaire and I know a black millionaire and this and that. But Chris Rock told you something, and I know it's stand-up, but I want you to think about this. Chris Rock told y'all something a long time ago. I think this was in Bigger and Blacker or whichever one. I'm not sure which comedy special this was. But he told you a long time ago. He said something that was really powerful. We missed it, though. We weren't really paying attention. But he said, you know, he, he, he said, in my neighborhood, I got a lot of people in there. He's like, you know, I'm a rich black man. He said, uh, I think he said Jay-Z lived around there. I think he said maybe LL Cool J, somebody like that lived there. And maybe somebody, it wasn't Mary J. Blige, but he talked about a woman or something like that that lived there as well. He was like, all of us live in this neighborhood. He said, guess what the white my white neighbor does for a living? <laughs> right? He said, my white neighbor is a dentist. He said he ain't the greatest dentist in the world. He said he's just a regular, plain old dentist, <laughs> right? And so he said, he said, he said, he said, black people got to shoot to the moon and be the best at everything that they do to get something that somebody else gets on average. You know why? Because you don't have a domain. We're talking about a king's domain. We got to talk about a king's domain, right? Three strikes right before, why, right when we get off the boat, right? We got to talk about a king's domain. You don't have a domain. You're, work, you're asking other people who own domain to respect you without domain. You're coming to the 
for those who remember what we talked about yesterday and the day before, I think I mentioned it again, right? You're coming to the table where there's a $50,000 chip minimum and you keep asking people to help you out because you only got 20,000. And yes, even though they stole your chips, it don't matter. They're not trying to make sure you can play and they're definitely not going to teach you the rules. Period. You're dealing with the right? You don't have a domain. And so in a sense, I agree with some of the people who come on here and say everything that you're saying is nonsense and you have a victim mentality. Yeah, guess what? I know what victors are. Victors are people who ask for triumphs. Triumphs happen when somebody takes over somebody else's land, kills off the people, commits genocide, comes back and says, okay, I want to be able to have a parade and I want to be able to present this people and even bring the people that I brought as slaves and the former ruler of these, of these people that now are slaves. And I want to kill them in front of everybody. And then I want to rewrite their story and I want to put our people to live there. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So, yeah, I get it. But I so so I get it that you think that you're supposed to be a victor because people who have victories are really bad people historically. That being said, though, because you don't know what a victor is. Right. But that being said, even with that, I get it that you have domain and you're not supposed to share your domain. You're supposed to rule your domain. Matter of fact, I get it on this point. You're supposed to gentrify. I don't have a problem with gentrification. If we knew that gentrification was part of kingdom building, we would gentrify too. There's nothing wrong with somebody saying, I'm going to make my community look like me. May I tell you something? This is how domain works. We don't know about a king's domain because we don't even know about a domain. This is how domains work. People show up to live in places because the domain the environment is right. This is what happens. You ever be in a bad neighborhood, Southeast DC, South side Chicago. It's always South for some reason, right? Maybe it's Pensacola, Florida. Maybe it's New York, New York. One of the five boroughs, pick one. Uh, maybe it's places next to Skid Row out there in Cali. Right. Wherever it is you want to go. Right. Honolulu, Hawaii, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, South side, Brockton, whatever. And uh, right. Even, even unfortunately, it's Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, street, road, whatever. <laughs> and you go to these places and you have you ever recognized that all of a sudden you start seeing buildings get put up like nothing's there. Everything's broken down, bad McDonald's, bad KFC, corner stores that sell liquor, this, that, whatever, right? Um, no healthy food. You got to go 20 miles over to get some food. And all of a sudden, I know where you see a Starbucks. That's weird. But okay. Dayton, Ohio, okay. Akron, Ohio. <laughs> um, you know. Some of the places in Pittsburgh, we can keep on going, right? But, you know, we can go outside, go to tons of places in Brazil, you know, tons of places in Mexico, whatever, right? But also you see a Starbucks pop up and you're like, that's, 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 that's interesting. You said some social constructs won't last past 100 years by themselves. Um, if you change the mindset, sure. If you change the mindset. The spirit of it is really what you want to deal with. The numa, the mindset of it is what you really want to deal with, the psychology. But nevertheless, you see the Starbucks, you go, that's weird. Then next thing you know, wait a minute, why is why is there a Walmart? Right? Why is this a Walmart? All right, Chill Pill. Right? Why is this why is this why is there a Walmart here? All of a sudden, wait, wait, wait a minute. Is there a whole mall being built? Wait a minute, is there a sports team coming to town? You know why those things are done? It's because they comprehend that the domain for kings has to be there. And so they actually deal with the queen first. What do, what do you mean? They deal with the woman first. Right? And by the way, if you're going to say that, you know that Captain Caveman is actually like supposed to be a white dude, right? 
He's supposed to be y'all. You guys are the, uh, what do they call it? Even though they're not real, Neanderthals are just people with white DNA. They didn't look like what they say they are, but that's what that's supposed to be. So if you're going to do it, you know, like actually say something like, you know, African booty scratcher or call me the N-word or call me something else. But don't tell me to stop being racist and you're saying unga bunga, <laughs> right? Get yourself together. Get your insults together, right? At least get your insults together. Come on now. If you're going to insult me, at least like get the right culture together. You, you're using white terms, you know? To at least call me like a a, a a porch monkey or something, you know. I'm used. To, I'm more used to people at least getting that right, you know, calling me that. Or if some people get creative; they actually spell out N I G G so and so so and so, right? Like get create, you know, be better than that if you, you know, get yourself together. But anyways, right? And um, you know, but you you yeah you, you have to you have to recognize right they they'll do that because they know that the woman's gonna come there. The woman's the one that shops. The woman's going to be the one that has stuff for the children. The woman's going to be the one looking for Starbucks. She's going to be the one doing these things. So when she does those things, it's like, oh, okay. So they, so you put that stuff in place, and the, the guys are going to be the ones to do what? They're going to go to go to the jobs primarily, not all, not 100%, but, you know, primarily. And they're going to be the ones to primarily protect the community. So whatever's going to happen in that community, they're setting up a community, they're setting up a domain in which people can come into, especially their wives and their children. But we don't think that way. We say, give us, give us, give us, give us. Start making things look like you and see how many of you will come around. See, the problem is, once again, you hear black community and you think that black community means you own it. You don't own it. You said is separation the true ultimate answer for huge happy happiness? Okay, I haven't heard that term before, huge happiness. Um, separation in a sense. I don't believe we should be segregated, but I believe we should have our own land. Everybody else does. Why not us? See, once again, gentrification. I'm not mad at, watch this. If I go to a Chinese community, if I were to go to a Chinese community and I ever wanted to open up a business there and they say that you got to have four, I got to pay four times as much to be able to get a building as anybody else does, I would not be mad at all. Thank you for the love stoners. You know why I wouldn't be mad at all? Because they're, that's their way of saying, if you come in here, you're going to be valuable. That's their way of saying, we don't trust anybody coming in here as that if they're not one of us without them making sure that they bring value because anything in here, it must be of value. I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't think it's unethical. I don't think that it's lack of morality. I think it's smart. I don't have a problem with a white man. It says, if you come in this neighborhood, you will pay four times as much. It's yours. It's your community. You can charge whatever you want. Isn't that how capitalism works anyways, for those who are into capitalism? Do what you do. See, we're busy as soon as we see that. Oh, see, you won't let us get in. We got to get this. We got to have a contract. We got to have a blah, blah. Look, get your contracts, all that stuff. But look, for real, for real, they're not supposed to give you what they have. you supposed to give you what you had. Before you were slaves, see everybody else always talks about stuff. What was your religion before you were slaves? What was your what did men do before they were slaves? What did women do before they were slaves? What was your language before you were slaves? Did you depend on other people before you were slaves? Or did you depend on yourselves? Yeah, and I'm gonna get to that in a second. That spun dirt in the gold comment, right? And we're headed there. So we're in the same mindset. Thanks for being part of the community. I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly or not. Is it is it Mekik, Mekikib? I'm not sure. Mekiki? No, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know how to say the word. I apologize. Thanks for being part of the community. I don't know how to pronounce it or what the what the word is. So I apologize. I'm sorry about that. Right? But we don't want to. We don't want to talk about that part. We don't want to be honest about that part. Right? That you always took care of you. Hey, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Yep, it is Shabbat. Welcome. Blessings. How you doing, Sister Austria? Right? Like, I'm I'm telling you, though, no, all right? Would you be great, Judah Israelite? Thanks for being on. Right? I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that you never used to depend on these people. It wasn't until somebody came here, right? They sent their uh, missionaries over. 
and their missionaries came with a mission and that mission was ultimately to use the soldiers they brought to make sure that you were oppressed and you would begin to be okay with being kidnapped but first they had to get you to fall in love with the kidnapper and then you started helping the kidnapper to kidnap he said however the people's mindset is so dependent upon the enslavers how do we separate from the mindset once again that's what we're doing here every day we're on but also we have uh, classes that we give extremely cheap classes we give it by donation right we give them via donation we're not even worried about that right but we're, we're i'm telling you that there are ways but once again we have to first recognize that we are in the land of our captivity how do you make sure that you are able to to provide a kingdom and have real kings you must make sure that there is a domain there is a land there is a domain that you are not under the captive Yashua came, for those of you that even believe in the Bible, Yashua came that he would set the captives free. Right? Like what, what Yashua said, he came to set the captives free. You are captive in your mind. You are captivated. We are captivated as a people. We are captivated by money. Look, do you realize that we got to be gaudy and all this stuff like that? Everybody, we got to have gold dripping off and this and that. And I ain't mad at it per se. But, you know, there's a lot of people that don't have money that don't look like us. And they don't got to wear all that. You know why? Because people that got real wealth, they don't have to have it falling off. Matter of fact, if you have it, everything you wear is supposed to be for a reason. But we just wear stuff because the only reason we have is we want you to see it. How many people got to do videos and every video got to have a shirt off because they got to show you that they ripped stuff because everything's look at me if you ripped and you muscular you ain't got to show everybody are you muscular for them are you muscular to make sure you're healthy so some brothers are muscular and they still have a heart attack because they don't really know how to do anything just because you can carve your body doesn't mean you're healthy there are some brothers right now that if i had to i'd, I'd outrun you and I ain't carved up. Right? But we are captivated by things that have nothing to do. Right? We don't have a domain for kings. Once again, where are the kings at? There are no kings in position. And once again, if you don't raise a king in a domain and you don't raise a king with the mindset of a domain, how does he protect his queen? How does he learn, learn it? See, watch this. Where is your domain where your king gets trained? Is your domain where your king gets trained in an accredited school? Because you know the best schools don't even have accreditation. Did you know that? The best schools are not accredited. But you, you're looking for accreditation. But the best schools are not accredited. The people who do the best in college are not people that went to school, but people that were homeschooled. He said the superficial is the acting out when one has been constantly or consistently denied. Love you too, mama. You take care of yourself. Right? This is the this is the this is what we're doing. I'm trying to tell you, like, this is real. This is real talk. The best schools in the world not just your country are non-accredited you said i never i clearly never went to college um okay is harvard accredited because I've, I've i've actually taken classes there is it accredited is juilliard accredited now i haven't played at juilliard and i did but i have been trained by people who got their degrees at juilliard and and um i would ask you is, is it accredited Oxford. Now you got to go over the water, but is Oxford accredited? <laughs> I'm just, I'm. Is Harvard considered to be a lower school or an upper school? Is Yale accredited? I mean, we, we, we want to keep going. Is, is Berkeley accredited? Surprise, surprise. Is. Notre Dame, Notre Dame, is it, is, is it accredited? 
Yeah, the schools that are considered to be the best, they're not accredited. You know why? Because if they were to do so, they would have to uh, they would have to dumb down what they do. Their domain would not be what they want it to be. So they don't allow certain things in their domain, so they refuse to be accredited. They refuse to say that somebody else gets to say whether they're accredited or not. They refuse to pay somebody else all that stuff. You said a king usually has multiple lovers. It's not very attractive in America to accept equals broken homes. Um, interesting. So um, I guess you could say that all kings have multiple lovers. I mean, I guess. I guess, except if you look at a lot of pharaohs, I won't say all the pharaohs didn't, but there's a lot of pharaohs that only had one person they were with. Matter of fact, Ramses the Great, Ramses the Second, Ramses the Third had one. That's just three in a row real quick out of the same dynasty. If you go back to the times of Imhotep, a lot of them only had one. There's a lot of people that are outside that, you know, we, we, we usually look at just certain people because we don't like kingdom. But once again, if they are doing something that's not moral, then it's not moral. But, you know, there's a lot of people who've been president that didn't have multiple wives that you saw, but they still slept with a bunch of people. Julius Caesar was out there wilding out. He had a wife, had Cleopatra, you know, a Greek woman that was sitting on the throne. Uh, and well, actually, her brother was sitting on the throne with her. Then they ended up killing her brother and they also, make, um, you know, took her sister hostage. But, you know, Cleopatra and then Cleopatra was sleeping around with a bunch of people while Julius Caesar was gone. Julius Caesar was sleeping with men and women. <laughs> you know, but there's a lot of people who have only had one wife who have been king. So that's kind of a moot point. A dog is a dog. If you're a man, it's the king. But I'm talking about true kings. I'm not talking about, it's like when I talk about a husband. A lot of y'all think that when I say husband, I mean a man that has a ring on his finger. Like you can be, you can be um, somebody who has a title and doesn't live up to the standard. Right? But we're talking about a king's domain. And your children are raised in things that aren't for them. And people are even arguing and see, this man has clearly never been to college. He's never been to college because he's talking about this and he's talking about that. Man, I started a college. I started a university. What you talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And in order to do it legally, I had to make sure that I studied how college works. And before I did that, I made sure when I got my college degree and my education, my official degree and stuff, I actually did it. I couldn't afford it. But they were but but I helped do things for them as far as helping a lot of their virtual stuff go, which is what we do now, pretty much primarily virtually. And I learned how to get that stuff going because for years and getting my degree, that's how I paid my stuff off. I put their stuff together and then I took classes simultaneously. That's where I got my degree. <laughs> you know. So, but once again, here's the problem. It's got to be our domain. This person's coming in saying, see, you don't do what we do in our domain. Why won't you listen to us? Why won't you agree with us? Because that's a kidnapper mentality. And I don't have Stockholm syndrome. And I'm not in love with my kidnappers mentality that doesn't even teach me. Right? I'm not worried about that. It's not my mentality. That's not my thought process. It's not my standard. And see, that's why you have to have your own domain. Somebody else's standard, fine. It don't have to be ours. Like, you know, hey, do what you do over there. I hope that you do well over there. But that's not for me and my house. We serve somebody different. But yeah, because a college education is not even a college education. Right? Education it's something different, right? Like education literally means if I were, if I were to say it, well, the way I say it is this education is I would reach inside you, pull out what's in you, show it to you, put it back inside you, and then discuss with you. How can we get you to what we saw? That's education. How many colleges do that? Right. Colleges are more so indoctrination. And by the way, doctrine is not what you what we think it is can i i'm gonna look up a definition of doctrine for you real quick All right a lot of people we think we just randomly come up with stuff i want to i'm gonna give you a de definition of doctrine All 
right? So first thing people do is they'll say, oh yeah, it's a belief or set of beliefs held or taught by a church, political party or other group. Yeah, political party or other group is in there. So everybody's got doctrine. But now let's look up some law dictionary stuff concerning doctrine. I'm gonna just go to the law dictionary. I'm not even gonna go to Black's Law Dictionary. We're just gonna go to the law dictionary. You ready? Law dictionary. What is the definition of doctrine? This is what doctrine is. Thank you very much, Tommy. If that's your way of saying hello, cool. I'm okay with that homonym. I'm okay with you coming in and, and gaslighting. I'm okay with you having cognitive dissonance, and I'm okay with you showing that you have done in Kruger effect. But you should probably recognize and see what's going on and make sure that you comprehend the etymology of that which you use. But, you know, if somebody comes on and can't even say hello and say that I'm automatically trash or this live is trash or whatever, then it shows that you have no value for humanity and therefore why would I allow you to be here with people that want to learn how to be greater human beings. And thank you to the moderator that dealt with that. So, so when you talk about, I want to talk about the definition of, right. When we're talking about this stuff, I'm sorry, give me one second, making sure that that person's blocked. Um, but when we talk about these things here, right. Um, I, I want to talk about specifically I'm trying to make sure that we report the racism with the other person. Might as well do that while I'm thinking about it. What did they come on and say? They came on and said, we, oh, hold on. Um, oh, said, Unga bunga, right? <laughs> Let me see. Um, I don't even know. Can I spell it the way he did? I think I did. And uh, yeah, that's right. He did say it that way because then when I said something to him or whatever, he said, "Stop being racist." <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. But anyway, so we put that there. Um, but yeah. Oh, thank you, Krypton. I appreciate you. Um, you know, so we're, we're dealing with those things. But here's, well, watch this. So this is what doctrine is. So we just heard, we just saw the, the definition um, of these things, right? The definition and and um, that definition, it says that it's by upheld by a church, but also what? It's upheld by um by also um, political parties and other groups as well. Now here's a law definition of doctrine. How you doing, Mayhew? Here's a law definition. How you doing, Keytroy? Thanks for being part of the community. Law definition of it says, it is a rule, principle, theory, or tenet of the law as the doctrine of merger, the doctrine of relation, et cetera, right? In order to do that, you have to interpret. Now, we know have to see interpretation to get a better example. We know that interpretation is talking about you got to know the language, what was said, the mindset, the viewpoint, the culture, the time, the et cetera. All those things to properly interpret what somebody says, because there's only one interpretation, but there are multiple applications. But when we're talking about what? When we're talking about doctrine, doctrine is a rule, a principle, right? A principle means an origin or even a kingdom origin. Um, a theory, so it can be theoretical, it doesn't have to be factual to be doctrine, and also what? It is a tenet or a tenet of the law, because law protects rights, right? Law ultimately does what? Law ultimately protects our rights. Laws do not give rights, laws protect rights. Okay, so, and all this stuff people are talking about being indoctrinated. Yeah, you go to, when you go to school, they indoctrinate you. They give you doctrine. And what is doctrine? They're giving you rules, principles, theories, and tenets of law. And they give you a lot of theories. The theory of evolution. You said Esau behavior, and you said, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for the blessing. Appreciate it. Right. They give you the theory of evolution. Do they not? It's not a reality. It's a theory. 
How dare you say that? No, it's a theory. Our theory's facts. But in your domain, you need to make sure that you've got facts and not theories. Matter of fact, in your domain, you need to not just have facts. You need to not just have context. You need to have contextual facts. Right, that's the first definition we read, Jay, yeah, right? So if you look at the lawful definition, it goes a little deeper. Now, if you look at the lawful definition of doctrine or, or I'm sorry, of interpretation, or if you look up the Black's Law Dictionary definition of interpretation, you'll find that it gets even deeper, right? Yeah, I know, Jay Sway, that's what I was saying. We, that's the same one we read earlier, the same definition, so we're in agreement, yeah. So like, I'm sorry, you said I can theorize about anything doesn't make it factual, right? So question, when it comes to you, if somebody's theorizing where you come from, is that who you are? See, we're talking about a king's domain, a kingdom. We said we were going to focus on this. And we got to make sure the kings are in place. Question in our community, do we even know where we come from or is it all theoretical? For most people, it's theoretical. You are learning about yourself through theories all day, every day. And you're treating these things as if they're gospel or God spell, right? That's how you really should know it, what it is. But you're treating it as if it cannot have anything. Oh, no problem, Jay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I agree with you. Like what you said, that's the exact definition that I that I saw. So we're on the same page. Yeah, we're good. We're great. Um, you know, so we don't we don't want to talk about that. But where do you come from? Where do your people come from? Where do your people reside? What's in your what's in your people? What's in your traditions? What's in your culture? What's in your domain? Is there anything that you have that is yours? Somebody says, see, I bought a shirt. I own it. Is it your shirt, though? Why is it that you looking for Gucci bags? Why don't you look for bags that got indinka symbols on it? Where's your Gian Yami bag? Where's your bag with Olive Bait on it or with Yahava on it or with, um, heck, if you want to worship other, you know, spirits or natures, et cetera, like where's, you know, the, the where's Noon? You know, where's Anansi? We don't like taking ownership over self. We are so into being away from self that we want to, we want to have anything that we own and needs to look like somebody else. Anything that I wear, it should look like somebody else. Anything that I drink, it should it should come from somebody else. Anything that I eat, it should look like somebody else. When you go to a, a Chinese restaurant, you see China on the plate. When you go to a Japanese restaurant, you see Japan on the plate. When you go to a Vietnamese restaurant, you see Vietnam on the plate. When you go to see um, to a, a place that's Lao, you see Lao on the plate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like if you go to a Polynesian place, Polynesian place, you're gonna see Polynesian on the plate. You hear what I'm saying? But when it comes to you, where are you on the plate? What's yours? We talked about this before. If you are indigenous to here or you were brought over here from somewhere else, do you know what your people ate? Do you know that during times of slavery, even though, so as you're still in slavery, you're still in somebody else's plantation. You just don't call it the plantation, you call it the city now. But you know, a plantation was a city and you still had to work for Massa or job out for Massa, right? And Massa still told you what you need to do as far as educating your babies. And Massa told you where you were supposed to sit in church and do all this stuff. But back in the day, of slavery, you know that they ate better than you? Did you know that? Can I prove it to you real quick? Real quick. You know how I know that they ate better than you? Because even if they were eating chitlins with the stuff that they were eating, like poke salad and watermelon and other things that they would find outside that they'd have to feed themselves, right? The stuff that they had to either sneak that they were picking or the stuff that they would know to go ahead and let grow in weeds and things like that in different places so they would go and tend to that, eat that stuff. But you know how I, ate, I know they ate better than you? I know they ate better than you because they ate organic. <laughs> there was no such thing as <laughs> inorganic. I know they ate better than you because they ate organic food. Right? We're not even in the position 
I was gonna pick some of it. Well, may I'll pick a piece of it. Or hold on, let me see what we got around here. I was gonna bring a red clover over, but I'm not supposed to just pick those. That's medicine for 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 bloom and flourish stuff. I'll, I'll take a leaf, right? I won't. I won't bring over the, the flower. I won't get in trouble, right? Now this is something that helps with blood flow. This little thing right here comes off a bigger piece of the plant, but I'm not gonna pull the whole thing up, right? But this helps with blood flow. And if you look at it, you'll see all the veins and everything on it. You, if you look at it close, you see a lot of veins and things, everything, right? There's something that helps with blood flow, all types of stuff that you're dealing with. And we would have known to eat this. <laughs> Don't get put out, right? We would have known to eat this. We would have known that this was okay. And so even while doing strenuous work, we were, we were living longer than the slave owners, than the, the people who made us prisoners of war. We were eating longer, living longer than them because we had enough sense to eat stuff that grew outside. It was okay. You know, here, here's a, I might be wrong on this one. I think I'm right, but I'm not the herbalist, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. This right here is a type of, uh, actually, I'm not sure now that I look at it, I was gonna say this is wild lettuce. This could be dandelion. I think it's wild lettuce. Right. So, you know, like something like this, I could easily be able to take and be able to eat. I could be able to take it and eat it. Right. Something that's just growing around. I'm not even bringing you the flowers and all that stuff. I'm not going to get in any trouble and pick this up. But, you know, something as simple as this grows everywhere. And you would think that, oh, that's a weed. This is that. No, that's that's medicine. Right. That's medicine. That's something natural. That's something you don't have to go buy. It grows. It's free. It grows in a lot of your sidewalks. And you don't even know. So you step on it or step over it or you be mad. You're like, man, when are they going to tend to these? Why are they doing this? You should be grabbing that stuff, washing it off. If you know what it is, you got to be trained. Right? And those that are on uh, uh, the podcast with us, looks like we only got a few more seconds before it turns off. So thank you for being on. If you want to join us on TikTok or YouTube, we appreciate you coming on over. And thank you so much for being on with us again. Right. You know, but, but yeah. And the leaves of the trees, the herbs are for the healing to the nations. Right. Revelation 22, two. I believe that's my wife's favorite scripture. You know, and yeah, they distract us from the truth. Keep one in constant disagreement with law and proof all day, every day, all day, every day. Right. And this all DNA all DNA designed to help your DNA, but you'd rather get it genetically modified and you call it organic because Whole Foods told you it is. Whole Foods is just part of another corporation, right? Whole Foods belongs to Amazon just because they don't put themselves under the, under the Amazon branch doesn't mean that they don't belong to the same person. There's one person telling you how to do everything. He tells you how to how to send food to somebody, how to make the food, how to give the food, how to sell the food, all those things. It's the same person. <laughs> it's the same person. It's a corporation. It's the same person, same fake person, same fake corporation, same fake United States corporation. It's the same thing. That's why we say a king's domain. Where is the domain that, that your king can own? Watch this. You have to stop. I'm not saying that black men cannot have patriarchal type activity. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to say that, right? We have some things that we've learned and that we've taken on that is not of us, and we better chill out on it, right? However, ladies, you cannot keep saying that black men, for those of you who do the feminist thing, you cannot keep saying that black men are patriarchal and are over you and are making your life miserable when they don't own anything. You need to support them owning. And then when they own and they don't pay you when they own, okay, now, now come holler at us, right? But we don't even have the domain to pay you what you owed. They go, all these black men in high positions and stuff, they ain't trying to make sure we get paid either. They're not in charge of the payroll. And even if they are, somebody else tells them what they're allowed to pay 
and what they're not. They have rules that they have to follow too because you're working for somebody else. You know, one of the greatest things I ever heard um, somebody say, this is Dr. Miles Monroe, right? Uh-oh. For some reason, I can't. Okay. I don't know what's going on with my device. I'm trying to move it up and down. It won't let me move up and down, so I apologize. I'm going to try and catch as many comments as I can. But for some reason, it won't let me. Uh, it won't let me do much of anything on here. I don't know what's going going on. I can't touch anything on the screen. As long as you guys can hear me, I guess I don't know what's going on. Like, I can close this out. See, that's the thing. If I try to close out TikTok, will it let me back in? You know what? I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna be right back. Okay. It's gonna say that I'm gone, but it's gonna restart it in just a second. Okay. I'm gonna risk it. Let's see what happens. Because I can't read you. I can't touch you guys' comments at all. So give me a second. Be right back. Promise. Yeah, I know you can still hear me. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see me? Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. I don't know. Just in case something goes on, hopefully you guys, even if you're not part of the community you don't you're not part of you know what they call followers or whatever um make sure you got my name in there kofi underscore 43 y'all see it or put in hashtag find hashtag f-i-n-d last name kofi first first name hashtag f-i-n-d kofi k-o-f-i all right hopefully y'all see it but i cannot do anything on the screen so hold on one second it won't even let me oh okay hold on Okay, so the top is working for some reason, but the bot. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. Praise yeah. All right, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't see anything going on. It should let me back if that ever happens. Usually, I can come back in and uh, it'll uh, ask me if I want to resume. But it is risky because if it doesn't let me resume, then I can't resume. But you guys would still be able to to see me, or you know, would be able to find this again if that did happen. But we don't have to worry about it. it looks like. I guess it's just pausing or something weird. Maybe it's a signal issue on my end. But um, but yeah, you know, we we need to have a domain. We ha we need to have a domain. We've got to have something that is ours. You've got to present something that's yours. You've got to have somewhere where your culture can be represented at all times, um, no matter what people think, no matter what people say, this and that. We've got to have something that's presented at all times. And we do not have that. Right. We do not have that. We don't have a place that is for us, by us, if you will. So if something happens, what's going to happen if, if, if anything happens to you, what, what, what do they do? Right. If anything happens to you, if anything frustrates you, if anything's attacking you, where do, what do you do? Where do you go? What what is the meeting point? If something happens right now, where do we all go meet? If you're in New York and you're in Southeast DC, right? You know, if you in the um, if you in Staten Island, if you in Southeast DC, if you in Beemore, if you in um, Raleigh, if you in um, in um, St. Louis or St. Louis, if you in New Orleans, if you in um, in Sacramento, if you in um, Spokane, if you in right wherever it is, if you in Kenosha, if you're in um, in Chi Chi Town. Right. If you in the D, whatever, and something happens, how do we where do where do we fall back on? How do we protect each other? What is your private land? What is your private plan? Exactly, because you can't go to the people that have been colonizing you and wait for them to be able to say we're gonna stop colonizing you. I don't know why we do that. Please, colonizers, please stop doing this to us. Stop oppressing us. Please give us laws that stop oppressing you. For what? That's what this nation is based off of. And that. And why, why am I f focusing on kings today? Why have I been led to do this? It's very clear. We're supposed to set the environment and we're supposed to protect that environment that we set. Right. It's the time out for us to stop waiting for somebody else to set the environment time out for us to waiting for somebody else.
to do what we're supposed to do. Time out for us to stop saying, hey, somebody else will get to it. It's time for us to stop saying, when will we get these, um, you know, when will we get these, um, you know, when, when will you look at us as humanity? If it hasn't happened yet, and you've been waiting how long? See, a lot of y'all think you've been waiting since 1865. Some of y'all think you've been waiting since 1791. Some of y'all think you've been waiting since 1611. Some of y'all think y'all been waiting since 1491, right? But the reality is, is you've been waiting a long, long, long time. And it still ain't count. At some point, you got to say, waiting on people that I've been waiting for for millennia has to stop. Waiting for somebody else to do what we are supposed to do for ourselves has to stop. I'm not saying you don't deserve reparations. What I'm saying is, is that it, depending on someone else for your reparations, time is up. If you want to go forward. Waiting for all of the diaspora to get it together so you will have to move. The time is up. Either you'll, if you move, a lot of people in the diaspora will watch you and will say, maybe we should go. Right? <laughs> but the time is up. If we're going to move, if we're going to do it, do it now. Right? We keep asking other people, when are you going to stop doing this to us? When are you going to stop? You know why people, you know why a lot of our people say there is no end in sight to this? You know why we say that? We say that because we're looking for someone else to end it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right? And I see you guys' comments. I see you, and I, I agree with all those comments coming up, right? Like, we keep waiting for someone else to end it. When are you going to end it? When are you going to end it? When are you going to come up with the law? When are you going to do this? When are you going to put more of us in there? Like, like, do you, are are you? Why do you have our faith is low? Watch this. I'll even go a step further with you, bro. Like, um, why is it that you have more faith in the person who doesn't have faith in you than you have faith in the one who created you? Why do you have more faith in the one who lacks faith in you as a human being, right? than you do in yourself as a human being. Exactly. Why do you have more faith in the person who doesn't think that you can be held accountable to anything other than being a murderer and being a killer and a drug dealer? And yeah, you know, here, bling bling to those of you that make me feel great as gladiators, but you have less faith in making yourself out to be the king that you've always been, right? Why? Why is that? You got to ask yourself that. And the reason why is because you bought into the doctrine. It starts with the mindset change. I, 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 could, I promise you, if somebody were to bless us, if we working on trying to raise money in different ways or whatever, if somebody were to bless us with a million dollars and we got the land together and I just said, hey, anybody who wants to come on the land can come on the land. You know what would happen? Bedlam. And within a matter of months, everything that we work towards would be gone. You know why? You know why? Because a lot of people are not even mentally prepared for freedom. Freedom starts in your mind. Nat Turner freed himself in his mind before he freed himself on the plantation. Malcolm X freed himself in his mind while he was in prison before he came out and started teaching us what it was to be free. Malcolm X, one of the strongest brothers, like I said, to ever exist. One of the strongest brothers that I've ever read about, known of, met people associated with, whatever. One of the strongest men ever. And remember who Malcolm X was. He was somebody taken away from his true self. Remember, Malcolm X born to a father that is a preacher, a mother who married his father because his mother was very light-skinned, and she didn't like the fact she was so light-skinned because it reminded her that her grandmother was raped as a slave. And so she married a man with color. That's her, that's his parents. His father is um, not just a, a preacher. He's a preacher and believes in Yashva, right? Preaches in a church at the same time though, is a Garveyite and has meetings where they would have guns on tables to be able to protect themselves. 
and is telling the black man to not only make sure that he takes his care of himself and separates himself here, but also is saying, hey, we need to be prepared at some point to go back to Africa. He gets stripped of himself when his father is murdered. They literally beat, found his father, got, got him or whatever, tied him up, bashed his head in, then tied him up to the railroad tracks, and then the railroad train basically ran over him. And then what they said at his autopsy was that he tied himself up, bashed himself in the head, and then died. His He watched his mother go crazy because his father was no longer around to protect, but also she was trying to get justice for him, and she was trying to get justice through a system that wouldn't give justice. He, he went, he... He himself cried himself to sleep and felt like he was going crazy watching his mother eventually lose her mind and end up in an insane, insane asylum. Right? He is somebody who went through all those things, ends up trying to go with the sister because the sister sees his penmanship because all the children get split up and, and, and put different places once the mom is out of the picture. He, he's, he's basically um, going to school somewhere where they're just calling him the N-word. He thought it was his name. He had told the teacher that he wanted to be something great. The teacher said, you know, you're just an N-word. So you need to try and do something else. You know, maybe you should be a carpenter. You know, Jesus was a carpenter. That's what his teacher told him. Right? <laughs> right? He ends up going to New York with his sister and ends up doing the zoot suit thing, going out there, becomes a pimp, a hustler. He runs numbers, you know, basically the beginning of what now has become the lottery. They made it illegal back then. You know, now it's legal to run the lottery and get y'all to give them their money. That's the way a lot of stuff works, right? And then after all that, he ends up being in prison. He goes there and he gets his mind freed. Once his mind gets freed, then he comes out and he's free. It starts here. If he can do it, you can do it. As Malcolm X would say, so, so, so were um, such, uh, sorry, um, such were some of you. Right? A lot of us, when we do this thing, man, these black people, look at Kanye, look at this person, look at these people out here. They're in the system. They'll never get it together. Some of you were like that too. I was a token. That doesn't mean I had to stay that. I was in the United States military, served, served, served as honorably as I could. That's where I am today. Right? I the my the 17 year old Kofi that joined the military, it definitely does not agree with the Kofi that was that 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 exists today. If the 17 year old Kofi met this Kofi right now, we would he would say, Man, you don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't born and raised in church, but I went to church too. Not, not a Christian anymore. Amen. Born again. It comes a thing of going through the process. But but it, guess what it happened through? It happened through domain. You know what happened? My domain was almost was completely stripped from me to where actually I had to realize that wherever my foot tread, it had to become mine because I became homeless. And when I became homeless, I actually had to go around and be like, I don't own anything. And I had to start studying as if I don't own anything. And I had to start going places and, and, and helping people and doing things. And I had to find places that nobody would bother me. And I had to be able to find ways to be able to eat during the day. And I had to humble myself. And I had to say, man, you know what? You don't have to be on drugs. You don't have to do this. Like, you could just simply not have a job and something bad can happen to you. I had to be humbled in that area. I had to learn what it was to take care of children and be in a one, one bedroom place and let the children sleep in there. And I'm sleeping on the couch. I had to learn how to do all those things. Or sometimes even before I had a couch sleeping on the floor, I had to learn all these different things. But it taught me about domain. It taught me the importance of having a domain. And so when I got a domain from that point on, it's been important to me to make sure that I have land. Amen. Praise y'all for it. Right. It's, it's been important for me to teach people to make sure that a domain a domain is where it's at, because now that I got domain, I will never let somebody else tell me what to do with that domain. I will never be so dependent on a nine to five that if I lose it, I can't have a place to stay. If I ever decide I could decide, you know, if you never know, somebody could say, hey, we'll pay you. You know, I'm going to have a W.A.B.E.M. this time, of course, but somebody could say, oh, yeah, you know, we'll pay you to to do this, to do that, blah, blah. And 
could be a perfect situation, could be something to where I could travel and still do the stuff I'm doing and have my own schedule and not miss a beat. It could be, you never know. I don't block anything out, but I would go into it making sure that whatever I have is my domain. I'm not just jobbing out to anybody. It's going to be in line with my work. If it's not in accordance with my work, then it's not something that's valuable. Right? Like the value is in the domain, kings. Queens, if you want your kings to be better, help them to get a domain. Give them something that's theirs. They don't have anything out here that supports who they are. Help them to make sure that when they come back to the domain, when they come back to the home, it feels like it's, it feels different than the world because they're supposed to be in the world. But when they come home, they ain't supposed to be of it. If anywhere, there should be peace. There should be peace here. If anywhere, I should be able to eat right. It should be here. If anywhere, look, ladies, y'all should be able to do this, too. But if anywhere, I should be able to vent. It should be here. Because venting out there might get me killed. So I got to act like everything's always in order. Or if I vent out there, I might make the community look bad. Because, you know, if a black man does something, then all black people do it. Thank you for the love, y'all. Appreciate it, right? But but if anywhere I should be able to vent, it should be in my own domain. If anywhere I should be able to turn my head over and sleep, it should be in my own domain. Real talk, ladies. We don't talk enough about this stuff, so I always feel like we lose some people when we mention this stuff. But real talk, if if anywhere I should be able to be success, uh, sexually fulfilled, <laughs> it should be in my domain. Especially if I'm not gonna if I'm gonna forsake all others. I'll leave that there. Right? This ain't sex ed class today. But I'm just right. I'm saying anywhere I should be able to be myself as a man, it should at least be in my domain. Problem once again, where is my domain? I'm telling young boys to be men, where do they do that at? I'm telling young boys, stop watching the foolishness on YouTube. Where else do they go look for? This is one of the reasons why we got to try and develop. You know, we just don't have enough people participation. It takes a lot to do, but we're going to try eventually to have more cartoons and stuff coming. Um, most of it's on me just because But we, a lot of stuff is on me. But as we grow and as we're able to give more stuff to, to people, we can start doing more. But we got to have domain. That's why we own all these platforms. I need we need domain, even if it's virtual domain. We need to have domain everywhere as much domain as possible. You need to be able to go to TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Halanas, Instagram, uh, 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 um, whatever. I can't remember all the ones that are out there, right? But all these different places, you need to be go somewhere. And if you put in something about our culture, you should be able to find somebody that looks like us, that lives like us, that breathes like us, that eats like us, that prays like us, that communicates like us, that, that walks and talks like us. And they say, hey, it's fine. My, my son, right, because he's lighter than I he has an issue with all this white black stuff, which, you know, gets to be a lot in all honesty, you know, um, but he has an issue because even when he tries to be like, OK, in his mind, he's trying to listen to people. Color doesn't matter, this and that. But then the same people he listens to won't like play with him sometimes. And so he's like, how does this work? This and that or whatever. Right. And so sometimes because he's lighter skin, you know, we, we act like, you know, I try my best with them, but you know, there's so much stuff out there from both sides of the spectrum that make it like black is bad or sometimes even light skinned is bad. So, right. But because he's lighter than me, he has a little bit of that issue, but then he'll, um, so yesterday we were watching, um, and it was a bad thing, but we watched the guy as we were going to visit my father, uh, we watched, um, a TikTok video and it was a, a little boy who's um, Rastafari and his parents are Rastafari. And one of the things that happens in Jamaica is a lot of people are anti Rastafari and they're trying to be as Eurocentric as possible, especially when it comes to school. So they don't want you to go to school if you're locks, if you have locks, or if you have locks um, and you, if you're Rastafari, you have to prove you're Rastafari in order to go there. And it's like they make it so ridiculous on even proving. First of all, why would you, how, how do you even prove that you're Rastafari? Um, you know, like it's it, even that becomes iffy, right? But 
because of the stuff going on and all that. So this little boy basically has not been able to go to school and his mother was crying about it. And his father was, you know, trying to be there and supportive and tell his son, you know, that, you know, he's, he's still great and he's a king and all these things. Right. And one of the things that happened is, um, so my son who deals with that a lot to where he loves his locks, but also society makes fun of his locks and things like that. And this boy was, lighter skin like him and he had locks just like him and he saw that there were people that were coming to this boy's defense and so i was able to have him watch somebody that looks just like him on media right use the same media the same domain but make it our own and say man you see that you see that boy you see his father who has locks too you see his mother who has locks too you see how they love this boy you see how wrong do you think that it's right because he's homeschooled my son is homeschooled but i was like you see why we homeschool do you think that it's right that 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 boy can't go to school because he has hair that looks like him his hair and he was like no and i was like you see how he deals with the same thing you're dealing with he said yes and just in that moment he was able to see himself right he was able to see himself because somebody put it out there's a domain he was rewarded he saw hey over there that family's lifting him up and kissing on him and hugging on him and there and there are people that are are rewarding that family's behavior and are coming to their defense from all over the world if they'll do that for him they'll do it for me it's a domain Uh uh-oh does somebody just mute miss mac that's probably an accident, right? <laughs> I don't know if Ms. Max said anything that was off. I didn't catch the comment. Is everything all right? I got to ask about that one. That's one one person that I wouldn't think that we would mute, but I got to ask about that one. But I think we just muted Ms. Max. But um, let me, she's probably still on, on, on. Let me fix that. It's got to be an accident. I don't know if we were trying to mute somebody else or something. Uh-oh, it's not even showing up on my thing. That's weird. Well, it said only for five minutes. So, Ms. Mac, if you're there, I can't get you back on for some reason. But um, you should be back on in five minutes or so. Apologize. So this is why we're, we're, we're re- revisiting this and we're looking at this again and we got to talk about this again and we got to be honorable with this again and we got to be on point with this again and we got to show uh, what's going on because we have a lot of people who don't, there's not a domain. There's not a domain. I'm so grateful that we had, that somebody made sure that there was a domain that my son could see himself. Right. I'm so glad that there's, there was a domain set up where my son could see himself. Right, something that was an issue for him. Two things, two, two, two things um, that he'll that he'll always see differently now because he saw himself. Right, that's the power of a domain. That's the power of this young prince who's trying to become a king, who wants to be like dad, who wants to be like the men that he sees in his community, that that he knows he's supposed to. Um, be married one day he knows he's supposed to take care of a wife the way that his father takes care of his wife he was able to see himself right he was able to see himself because there was a domain and not only did he see himself and he sees that there are people that believe and what he believes believe in what he's doing therefore what he's doing he says what okay i'm in a position now to where this is something that is uplifted it's not something that's bad You said, may I ask how we've always spun dirt in the gold? I mean, if you're talking about um, sorry, I'm, I'm sitting up here trying to upload podcasts and stuff while we're doing this. And this thing is messing me up. But um, how we've always spun dirt into gold. Um, I mean, really, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, a lot of 
constantly consistently made sure that we can do those things and we don't allow um once again somebody else to be the indicator or the the end or the beginning of what we're going to do and what our experience is um how we do it today the way that it's always been done except this time we need to do things collaboratively there needs to be a collaboration amongst the diaspora um what's happened before is yeah you've had um You've had people that will create their own hair care products, right? You've had a Madam C.J. Walker. You've had another um, young girl who was a um, oil tycoon at a at an early age. Um, you know, you've had the Black Panther Party. Um, you've had um, you've had uh, Malcolm X. You've had Martin Luther King Jr. You've had a lot of these um, people come around and and be in positions. Problem with it was is that. Um, we didn't have these people together, right? We didn't have the Black Panther Party with Malcolm X. We didn't have the Black Panther Party with Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. dies in 68. Fred, Fred Hampton dies in 68. Same time frame. Didn't work together, right? Um, you had Tulsa, Oklahoma, and but you didn't put Tulsa, Oklahoma together with a Black Panther Party type mentality to where we protect ourselves. Um, you had those people who didn't have sovereignty, right? Like a like a Yusuf L or somebody. Um, you had different things, but you never put them together. And so um, at the end, you know, at the end of the day, what we need to focus on is making sure that we put them together, you know, but we've, we've always, first of all, we, we must comprehend that before we were always having to come out of a bad situation. We, as a people, we're not necessarily always in a bad situation. You must remember that when they talk about the dark ages, they don't talk about our dark ages because our dark ages are not the same. When you had other people that didn't know what it was to bathe or didn't know what electricity was or things of that nature, that was not our problem. <laughs> that was not our issue. You know, we had we had street lights, you know, well before Christ. Oh, it's our pleasure, Cash. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Well, we had street lights. We did. We had those things in order. We had um, natural medicine. We knew how to eat. Matter of fact, we wouldn't even call it natural medicine. It would have just been food that you need to eat. Um, if you were going to heal somebody, something that my wife was talking about with introduction to herbalism, you know, um, we had pregnancy tests. Did you know that back in Kemet? They would take um, they would take two types of plant plants or whatever, and they would plant them um, in the ground or whatever. And they would have, a, um, and then they would have a woman urinate on those two types of plant while she was praying over her and doing things like that, and uh, or speaking incantations, whatever you want to call it, right? And then after, uh, oh great, okay, cool, you're back, Miss Mac, yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, you know, hopefully it was just an accident. I don't know what what happened. I couldn't even find you in the muted place, so it was weird. But. Um, but yeah, so they'd have the woman pee on both different types of plants. My wife was teaching us that in um, herbalism class a couple of weeks ago, and they would actually see which plant, you know, would grow or whatever, right? And um, if I'm saying it right, I feel like I'm a little off in the explanation, but something along those lines. And when whichever plant grew or whichever color sometimes came out or whatever, would be an indicator that, oh, okay, like she's pregnant. And not only that she's pregnant, but she's going to have a boy or a girl. Like, so it was even, it was even better than our pregnancy test. Cause you get the pregnancy test and you even get the, um, the, uh, forgive me, the picture, the, 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 the video that they take, I'm sorry, when you're pregnant, um, why am I having a moment here with this word? Y'all know what I'm talking about, <laughs> where you see the picture where the baby looks like and stuff. Um, um, it's like right on the tip of my tongue, sonogram. Thank you. And, um, you know, but back then they just say, oh, yeah, you know, let's see if you're pregnant. Go ahead. We're going to plant these two plants. You're going to pee on both of them. Not only will you pee on both of them, we'll see um, which one not only will see you pregnant, but we'll actually be able to tell if it's a boy or a girl. Ultrasound. OK. All right. And we'll see if it's a boy or if it's a girl. Right. Like like that's that. So so we were ahead of where Western medicine is today, well ahead, right? We were well ahead of where they were today, 
right? We were there to where when we were wrapping somebody, somebody had a broken bone and things, we were wrapping a certain type of plant and everything. We would make sure we reset everything. And then we would be praying over it and speaking over it and speaking healing to be over it at the same time. Now they're talking about positive energy and make sure that you're in a great mood and don't stress yourself out as if that's something new. But once again, you know, you have to be in a position to comprehend and recognize that you had your own domain. Right. You had your own domain. You didn't worry about what everybody else had to say about what was yours. You didn't look to other people to tell you what to eat. You said the people have been together would they have been different. I don't know exactly what you mean by been together. You mean like if we had looked at ourselves as diaspora? I'm sorry. Um, okay, I see you, Minister Select, uh, Joseph. Okay, Minister Select, Sharon, I see you talking about the October form. Okay. Okay. All right. And I'm kind of talking over that that point now, and this is like Joseph, of how we free our mind. We're talking about really this domain piece. Like we have to have a domain where it's free. And then we're free dom. Free dominates. Kingdom should allow freedom. Now, see, this is when it's an issue, right? As we have a lot of kingdom, right? People that are kings who are dominating, but they're not creating the environment and where free dom where free, things that are free dominate right you must have a kingdom and a freedom and you're right about what the colonizers and this and that and all this stuff or whatever here's the deal at the end of the day that's why i said we must recognize what they did we must learn from it we must execute to make sure it doesn't happen again however we must also execute in a manner to where they're not our focus I recognize that they're colonizers. I also simultaneously recognize that they are not my focus. Learn about them so you know what they what 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 colonization looks like. Learn it right, but uncomprehend. You are a king. You are a queen. You must colonize. That's why I'm saying, where is your domain? Right. Where is your domain? Where is the place you colonize? Where is the place that you have gentrified? What looks like you? Does everything in your house, from what you eat to what you wear to what you speak to, to et cetera, does it look and sound and act and taste like you? Right, when I taste foo food, that tastes like West Africa, that tastes like home. Right. If I have jollof rice, that tastes like Africa. That tastes like home, West Africa. Right. You said we were the first to colonize. Yeah. Every kingdom colonizes. If a kingdom does not colonize, it is not a kingdom. Right. The question is, is it you colonizing? Does it look like you? Salah. Right. And I'm not talking about this modern version of you. I mean, the list goes on in food over and over again, right? I'm just saying, I'm not talking about the modern version of you. The modern version of you, I'm talking about who were you always supposed to be? That is what salvation means, salvaging yourself. You said, well, with seven children, I think we have made our own very own colony. I mean, very true, right? Well, you have a group of people who have the ability to colonize in several different directions, right? And it's going to have to start with a kingdom-centric mindset. And now how do you colonize? Watch this. This is how people colonize what you call money. The Rothschild family, it started off with one guy. He realized that a bunch of people were having issues and they needed bills of exchange he started writing out a paper system that basically is like your checks and stuff. He started writing out notes. That's where you get C notes and stuff from, that terminology. That's what we're into right now, that terminology from those terms. He wrote, um, he basically allowed kings to go from one place to another and that he had children. What did he do? He said, I'm going to set up a bank over here 
with this child, a bank with this child in France, a bank with this child in England, a bank with this child in Portugal, a bank with this child in Prussia, a bank with this child, et cetera, right? And all his children and then family members and then even grandchildren got in on the act. And everybody went to different places. And they had different banks. And so if you went from, if you were, uh, and then watch this, because of wars and everything, they manipulated what's going on. They realized, hey, England, if you need to keep this war going, then you need money. But France, if you need money too, and this place needs place. But what if England needs to send somebody and they need to have royalty come over to meet with somebody in France, but they don't want to bring all their gold, right? Because that's a lot of stuff you got to protect. Well, then just write us a promissory note and then come down here and just for a little bit of interest or whatever, we'll give you your, we'll give you whatever gold you need down here, right? It'll be an IOU and all this stuff or whatever. And we'll write this up and write up C notes and these checks and this net or whatever. And so now it went from just people are doing this to it went to whole governments are doing this. They colonized a whole area, a whole institution of banking. So now everything that you do, it has to run through that institution. They colonized it. They made it look like them. All these banks look like each other to the point to where they still write fake money. All they do is write numbers on the thing. You think that when you, I don't have my, I thought I had my wallet out here, but you think when you pull out your wallet or whatever, and you pull it out and you go in there and you say, okay, you know, you, you 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 go, you get your wallet and you pull out a little card out of that wallet. You're like, okay, I'm going to use my, my my card. And you swipe it. You think that you swipe money. There's no money. Thank you for the love, right? There's no money. There's no money in that wallet. There's no money on that card. There's numbers. There's no gold that exchange hands. It's just numbers. If you were to go to your bank, if you got $10,000 right now, you were to go to the bank and say, hey, I want $10,000 cash right now. You know what the bank will tell you? We can't give it to you. Might not even be able to give it to you for a couple of weeks. Because they don't have it. They don't have the gold to back it up. They don't have anything that they can give. That's why banks leave their vaults wide open. They colonize it. That's why if a bank starts, and we talk more about this in Sovereignty too, but if a bank starts today, all you need is to have like... Um, like, let's say you start a bank and you got $1,000. All you got to have, you don't have to have a full thousand. All you have to have is a certain percentage of the money. So if you have $1,000, like, let's say your bank, let's just make it simple. I know it'd be more money, but let's just make it simple. If you said at your bank, you got $1,000 in it. All you really got to have is something like, um, it's like 9%, I think, is all you have to truly have. So somebody comes and gets a loan. So you went to the bank, you got a $500 loan. Let's say you're let's say you going to buy a car. You wanted to get a really nice car. You got a $50,000 loan. You went to the bank, you got a $50,000 loan. Guess what that, guess what all that happens? All the bank had to have is 9%. So they had to have a little less than $5,000. $5, That's all they had to have to be able to write you a loan for $50,000. That means that they gave you something that they didn't have. And you take that loan and you have to go to other companies and buy this and buy that or whatever so that they can take pieces of that fake money to other banks so that those banks can have fake money. No wonder you keep crashing. But they have it set up where it's colonized. They've colonized a system that looks like that, that's based upon fake money and fake people with fake birth certificates and fake social security numbers and all this stuff go around paying fake money because there's no gold or silver to back it up and by law in your constitution you cannot even have money if it's not backed up by gold or silver <laughs> the golden rule of banking right but we're out here spending fake money because it's so colonized and it's so gentrified that we even give credence to the fake because the fake um the fake outlines the fake that you go to school and you learn about what's fake Matter of fact, school has become so fake that they keep telling you, go and get your college education. But hey, we don't have a whole bunch of people out here that can work because they lack trades, which means that you could have dropped out of high school and got a trade and been doing better than a lot of these people with high school, I mean, college education, where they're still trying to pay off these college loans and they're in the debt. And people have caught up to this so much, right? They're now children, young teenagers, especially young white males, right? Young white males have said, we're done with college. And a lot of people starting to follow. They're starting to go to college. They're stop. There's that somebody who came on earlier. Oh, you must have never been to college before. You know, a lot of young white males are saying we're done with college. You said the bills and coins all uh, talisman, uh, uh, talismanic. 
or talismans is any object described with religious or magical powers intended to protect, heal, harm individuals for whom they are made. I mean, in a sense, it's very true. Uh, matter of fact, I won't even say in a sense. <laughs> it's just very true, right? Even to the point, down to the point of, um, you know, even down to the point of like, look at your money now. Your money has slave owners on it. You think that's do you, like think about the system. That's why I say you got to come out the system and you got to have a king, a place where a king can have a domain. Right. Then look at your money. Do you think that it, it makes you feel? Do you, What do you think that your money makes you feel? Right. Those of you who like to use terms like because um, I don't really use these terms, subconscious, subconscious. Do you think subconsciously you feel great when you look down at your money and you see somebody that owns you and your family? Subconsciously speaking, what do you think that makes you feel like? Right? Yeah, I hear you, Mr. Supreme. You know, what do you think that makes you feel like? You said, why do I put the white man on a pedestal? If that's what you're saying, it's pedestal, pedestal. Um, why am I putting the white man on the pedestal? Because I'm talking about him. I think if you, I think you might have just came in because I was legit just saying before then that yeah, we must teach this stuff, but we should not focus on it to the point to where we give somebody else power over our domain. Um, we must do things for ourselves. So um, I, I, I don't know if that's what you were saying, but I think you might be a few seconds too late. Um, and we've been on for hours now, but, um, but yeah, you know, like, you know, so like, you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is that like, even, even look at that, like the system that you're in, when we say we must have our own system, when you're talking about a kingdom, the king must have a domain, a king's domain, a kingdom. Um, you've got to make sure that the domain is there. You live in a domain today, once again, like you use fake money. You don't have money. You don't carry cash. If you get a loan, they never give you cash. Right? Which is one of the reasons, if you know how sovereignty works. Now, you should always be honorable. But if somebody messes up with your loan or you think that somebody's doing something and not being honorable with the contract that you have, you always have the right to be able to say, time out. Time out. Um, I'm not going to pay that off because you never gave me any cash. That's actually like a very simple basic thing people don't recognize. It's like when people get called by creditors and people are like, oh, um, you know, I got to pay off this creditor. They're going to make my credit look bad. No. Tell them that you're not going to pay off a creditor. Well, no, you got to understand that even though, you know, um, I told at and I told Apple, I told whoever I wasn't going to do that. But, you know, they're saying I still owe them this and I still owe them this or whatever. I don't want my credit to look bad. If, they, if a creditor is calling you, then the creditor had to buy your debt. So why would you enter into a contract as soon as you pay the creditor or say something over the phone around along those lines to the creditor that means that you're entering into a contract you sit you send cease and desist letters after you write a couple other letters first explaining that you recognize how a bill of exchange works and therefore since you bought my credit i'll go ahead and let you keep what you bought i'm not going to enter into a contract with you and if you bought my credit already or you bought my not even credit really if you bought my debt from whomever the company is that me and that company we're square so you can go ahead and keep the debt because they'll get paid for it anyways at the end of the year you don't even know how that works right but we don't recognize that you know we have a whole thing of uh you know we, we have we have a whole thing that's set up right we have a whole thing that's set up to where we're following other people's culture we're following what everybody else has to say about us we're more concerned about what everybody else has to say about us we're more worried about everything else and we're not just doing things for ourselves we have to have a domain though to do things for ourselves stop asking these kings to be outside their domain um rosie said sam so you could fold build a certain way and see pictures of what's intended oh okay some some of them yeah like that for sure So working for a trucking company does not imply eminent domain. Right. 
And what we're trying to get is domain. Like at the end of the day, where's your domain? If you want your women to be paid correctly, right? Comprehend. If you want them to be paid correctly, you got to have something your own that allows you to pay them correctly. I know you're going to try and say we're part of the patriarchy, but if we don't own anything, how are you over people? It's like when people, once again, stop saying you're in a black neighborhood and nobody in your neighborhood owns. Stop saying that you go to a black store and you don't own the domain. Guess what? If you don't own a domain, all that black story is, is one bad month away from not being able to pay their bill and somebody else will come right in and own it. But when you own the domain, if that person is not able to pay you a month, you can say, hey, bro, hey, sis, don't worry about it. I'll give you a couple extra months. Get yourself together. That's when you have ownership. We don't have a domain for these kings. Stop trying to ask kings to take ownership for things, and we don't have domains for kings. Us who are kings right now, we need to stop asking these little boys to become kings, and we're not going to give them domains. We're going to kick them out the house as soon as they turn 18. Stop asking these young princes to try and turn into kings, and they can't even have a domain because before they turn age 18 and get a chance to even be by themselves, you've already put bills in their names and have not even paid those bills. Yes, I've heard of Brother Ben asked before. And he has a lot of great stuff to say. Matter of fact, I had a little conflict because Brother Ben X, and um, I'm always forgetting his name. I know his real name, but I can't remember. I, I don't be remembering his TikTok name and stuff and all the stuff he's famous on. Um, well, he's put his name out there, George, but that's not his name. Um, he got locks, wears glasses, he's a professor. I can't believe I forget his name. But anyways, um, but yeah, um, you know, it's, it, you, yeah, I know about his, uh, Islam as well. He has a lot of great stuff to say too. Um, I especially love the stuff that he does, taking a, a lead on making sure that he's speaking on, um, you know, medicine and natural medicine and not needing to take vaccines, things like that. Um, but, you know, they actually had an issue, him and George, where Brother Ben X and him were actually like fighting against each other. And both of them, I, you know, who I have mad respect for, I actually know George. We have each other's number and stuff. Um, but uh, <laughs> it was very, you know, it showed we were fighting against each other. We were so great to make sure we were fighting against each other in public, by the way, too. Um, George kind of wanted to smoke because George is very much so an apolog uh, apologetic master. So sometimes he'll fight you just because that's easy. He's a warrior. He'll just fight consciously. Thank you. He'll just fight for the sake of fighting. And we need brothers like that, too. We do need brothers that are just ready to fight. Um, but both of them are fighting the fight and not talking about, once again, you know, the dominion, the domination of things, the domain of things. I know about Geno Jennings as well. Thank you. All right. The apostle. Right. So we had all these different things going on, but we're not talking about domain. All these things sound great until you realize we don't have anywhere to put these things in place. If you can only put these things in place when you go to a service. Hear what I'm saying? If you can only put these things in place when you go to a service. Now, somebody says, oh, no, well, they teach us stuff and we go out and do these. Things. No, no, no. If you can really only put these things in place when you go to a service, because it's the only place within the land of your captivity where it's allowed and it's only allowed as long as you don't have to go to your job, which means that the job and the world and the system still supersede those things you're being taught, right? Now we have a problem. Can you see the problem? If you can only focus on Yah 100% on Sunday or on Saturday or whatever your day is, we have a problem. This is why your domain and your first domain is here. You are bombarded with so much here. Before we talk about here, you are bombarded with so much here that it becomes difficult. You said creditors, do creditors get paid from their trust? Um, I mean, creditors basically, in a sense, do. They're getting paid off your birth certificate, long story short. I mean, everybody gets, really. <laughs> You know, because your birth certificate, each birth certificate is worth, you know, at least it, it used to be years ago. So I'm not even sure what it is now. But, you know, each birth certificate is bare minimum, at least worth like six million dollars, because that's what the average person will make, which shows you 
since there's so many people in abject poverty, it shows you how many how 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 much wealth is to a few people. But it averages out to like each birth certificate is worth about six million dollars, right? Because remember, cash has to be gold or silver. So if cash has to be back or it's supposed to be backed up by gold or silver, it's not real. So if they're going to you know Federal Reserve or to other banking systems, it's not all the Federal Reserve, you know. But if they're going to families, Federal Reserve, other countries, whatever the case might be, and they keep asking for money, these places that they're going to, they're not asking you for money, right? If you don't have money, think about America's supposed to be right. Like what? It, let me let me look up because they have the debt calculator, right? The U.S. debt calculator, or something like that, or U.S. national debt clock. That's what it is. So I'm going to just look up on the U.S. national debt clock. It always tells us where we are. So you can always look up how much debt the country's in. So right now, the national debt is thirty trillion four hundred ninety-five billion nine hundred eighty-four million. Just went over two hundred thousand and yada 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 dollars in debt, which means that if you are a citizen of these United States, you right now um, owe ninety one thousand five hundred sixty seven dollars per person. If you are not a non citizen national, right, and therefore if and if in but and if you are a taxpayer, because not all citizens are taxpayers, which should show you something that you don't have to pay taxes but nevertheless even if you are part of the system but if you're part of the system per taxpayer that means that you owe two hundred forty two thousand dollars and or two hundred forty two thousand nine hundred and eighty five dollars how much are they is the you is the federal government spending right now the federal government right now officially so it could be something different but officially because you know there's unofficial spending too but officially they are spending six trillion one hundred fifty eight million three hundred ninety five actually i'm sorry did i say that six trillion one hundred fifty eight billion three hundred ninety five million um three hundred thousand dollars or so right now what is the federal government making federal government is only making four trillion now they're 30 trillion dollars in debt but they're only making Four trillion two hundred twenty-five billion eight hundred sixty-eight uh million one hundred thousand dollars or so, which means that per citizen, wait a minute, they're supposed to be revenue per citizen. So per citizen, we're supposed to be making a certain amount of money. So that means and basically, even no matter how much money you think you're doing, the average citizen is really only making twelve thousand six hundred and ninety three dollars that's 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 what you make it but you got to pay them taxes right that's what they tell you total debt to gdp ratio is 143.12 percent if you know what that means that is scary Supposedly, per family, savings is supposed to be $12,990. Now, don't answer this question because I don't need to know your business and nobody on here does. But real talk, are you guys, do you guys really have $13,000 saved up as a family? Yeah, it doesn't mean anything to be in debt. You know why? Because you are the stock. You are the stock. They make money off of you. You are the stock. And most of us in here can say that we ain't got 13000 I don't want you to answer now. <laughs> right? Some of us already answered. Don't go ahead and answer. Right? But $13,000. Most of y'all don't got 13000 saved up. But they said that's the average savings per family, which means that you got to look at how many people got a whole lot of money saved up to, to make that average go up from how many people don't have anything in savings. So a lot of people don't have checking account. A lot of people praise y'all. A lot of people better praise y'all for whoever created Cash App. Because if a lot of people didn't have Cash App, a lot of people wouldn't have nothing because they don't even have bank accounts. Right. Well, that's, see, that's a great point, right? If the average citizens 
making 12,000, how do you save up 13,000? So we can see there can be some trickiness with this. But nevertheless, though, and the U.S. population is pretty much the same thing as been since I was a child, which means that we're not growing to make sure we're not having families, we're having abortions, we're killing each other, we're killing, letting people kill us, et cetera. Because it says the U.S. population, 333 million, 15,000, uh, 553 people. When I was in school, I think we were at 325 million or 330 million or somewhere in between. And we've been there pretty much ever since. We're not growing. You said, how can you, when every time you turn around, you have what have bills, they have to pay gas or things like that. Well, once again, you've got to have a, dom a domain. Kings, we must make sure that our sons have domains. Queens, we must make sure that our our children have domains. In order to have a kingdom, you must have a you must have a domain. You said the Rothschilds are estimated to be worth five hundred trillion. Yeah, probably way more. Like, like you got to comprehend when you get to a certain level in the game, you keep all the cash and everything and all that stuff. But I need you to recognize, um, cash doesn't even mean anything. Cash is monopoly money, right? Domain, domain. domain cash doesn't mean anything like people who have money they ain't worried about what you think they they look like they set the state matter of fact do you know like a lot of people the way that, they, that it works is that their families dress a certain way like if you look at rothschild families rothschild families dress in a certain way you can tell they're rothschild even by the way they're dressed because they keep their tribe believe it or not even on their level, they comprehend tribe. They comprehend what should we look like. My son and I, right, are going to look similar. My wife and I are going to look similar. Why? Because no matter what's going on, right, there's a comprehension there. There's there's a conception there. There is a, um, what is it that I'm looking for? Uh, we were talking about earlier, um, gentrification, even. Colonization. Wherever we go, it's supposed to look like us it's supposed to right when i see some of my brothers out there and we wearing the same thing you're like that's great to see why because we're supposed to look like us and i'm not going backwards in that i've made up my mind that i'm going to continue to look like us and to make sure that i bring our culture to it and what does that do that's another way of making sure that we have a domain if somebody comes to see about me, right? The same way that somebody, watch this, the same way that somebody's pressured to ensure that when they go to their corporate gig, that they're gonna have their suit and tie on, I'm, they somebody should feel pressure when they come to us to make sure that they have their tunic or their, um, you know, or their robes, or, uh, you know, they try to used to call it toga and stuff back in the day, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, you also make sure that you have your, um, chamise all these different things your dashiki even your dashiki print there's a difference between the two all these things when we show up people should feel pressure to look like us why because you're coming to our domain but people don't feel pressure to look like do you do that people don't feel pressure to make sure that they treat your wife with respect your children with respect your daughter with respect your your sons with respect your parents with respect do that because you don't have anything that looks like you if you looked like you, they would respect you more. I know we're over time, right? I'm, I'm going to try and just get this last part of the sept out there, this concept. Hopefully it becomes a concept for you. If you look like you, hear what I'm saying? If you look like you, right? Peep game. If you look like you, they will respect you more. Why would I respect somebody that wants to live as an as as this modern version of an American, right? Why would I respect you when you are okay with spending stuff that looks like the people who said that you were slaves and made you slaves? George Washington, slave owner. Thomas Jefferson, slave owner. Abraham Lincoln, slave owner. Andrew Jackson, slave slave owner. Um I skipped somebody. Andrew Jackson is on the 10 or the 20? He on the 20, right? 
Who's on the 10? Who am I skipping? Somebody on the 10 and 20. Who's on the 10 and 20? One is 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 Washington slave owner. Two is Jefferson slave owner. Five is Lincoln slave owner. Who's on the ten? Who am I forgetting? Why am I forgetting the ten dollar bill? I must not use them that often. Why am I forgetting the ten dollar bill? Is it Hamilton? No, Franklin's on a hundred. It's Hamilton. Okay, so Hamilton. Right. Actually, Hamilton, you can kind of say, no, no. Hamilton, basically slave owner. Is it Adams? Okay, now I'm confused. Let's look it up real quick. I feel like TJ probably would know better than I, but let me just look it up. Who is on the $10 bill? Gotta be Hamilton, right? Okay, Hamilton. Okay, cool. Slave owner. <laughs> Jackson, slave owner. Grant, believe it or not, because all you hear about is how he fought for the union. Slave owner, Franklin, slave owner. Susan B. Anthony, raised as a slave owner, also said that she would rather give her right arm, right? She'd rather give her right arm up, she said, than have black people, black beasts vote before she would. Slave owner. Right, that's not on the dollar, right? Actually, are there some Susan B. Anthony dollars out there somewhere? I think somewhere in history there are. Very, very um, limited edition. They've been telling you about them Tubman's coming out for the longest time, and they still won't put that out there. Right? But these are, these are, in fact, slave owners, right? Why would somebody respect you if you'll walk around and think that spending... A slave, making sure that a slave owner represents your who you who you are, your estate, what you're going to buy. Why would somebody respect you if you think if if you think it's okay? Like, why would somebody respect you? You don't go there and be like, yeah, man, I'm gonna use these, these you know this slave owner to go ahead and represent how free I am and how much money I make. Excuse me, brothers walking around with packs of them, right? Doing the videos where they slap them together, right, and put them on the and stuff, and they got them out there for you and doing putting it on IG and stuff to show you that they got a brick of money and this and that and all this stuff like that. You just carrying around slave owners. Oh yeah, yeah. We talked about Thomas Jefferson, yeah, and how yeah you can ask for them, you got to request them, special request for him. And he's he's got the most cognitive dissonance out of any of them, so I guess that's why they put him on number two, <laughs> you know. But it, it, I'm just trying to tell you, we have to start coming out of the land of our captivity. It starts in here, and it starts in here, and it starts even. I know I know we won't talk about it, but it even starts here, right? Why? Because this is something you were told was awful for so long it starts here because it was something you were told was bad for so long it starts here because it's something you were told was awful and bad and horrible for so long at some point you got to have some kind of even mental real estate to be able to say it's okay to take ownership of who i am right if it's okay for me to take ownership of the slave owner and spend my money on them yeah, it's got to be i'm sorry you said always thought about wanting to learn what the twist in headdress mean? Oh, and big time the tassels. I'd be forgetting about the tassels. Um, <laughs> that's something else we can do as a fundraiser. And them things aren't even that expensive at all. They're, they're cheap to make. Um, I can send you a bunch of them or whatever for a certain donation or whatever. That's something else we could do. But um, you know, maybe at some point we'll learn how to do them. But they're real simple to make. They don't cost much of anything at all. Um, you know, if you want me to do specialized one or whatever, or specific colors or things like that, you know, then we got to talk about that. And I'm not even like an expert at making them, but you know, I can do something a little special with them from time to time. Um, but yeah, you, we, we don't recognize that. Like we've got to make sure that we have a, what a dominion, a King's dominion, a King's domain. Are we, and, and why are we not pushing out Kings? Cause they don't have demands. Right. Why are we not pushing out kings? Because they don't have domains. Why are we not pushing kings? Because they don't 
have the means. Right? If you don't have a place where you can be rewarded for being a king, you don't have much of a place at all. No wonder a lot of people say, who cares if you identify as a male or not? There's no domain for men. There's no domain for men. If there's no domain for men, why would you want to stay in a domain that doesn't reward you for being who you are? You said go for you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So thank you guys for being on. Um, we appreciate the king, queen, and each and every one of you, even if you're not living inside that kingdom of queendom yet. We appreciate the potential king and queen in each and every one of you. Um, we're going to go ahead and... Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get ready. Um, hopefully you guys get some rest in between. We should be treating this like Shabbat anyways. Um, but we'll be meeting together on Zoom. If you are somebody who just came in or is new to us or we don't have your information, whatever, all we really need is your email. We can make sure that we send you the invite. Um, if you're on YouTube, we got all our information down in the um, description box with this video. If you are on TikTok, go to our main TikTok page. Click on where it says website, not where it says bio. Bio only has a tiny bit of information. Click on where it says website. Click on that. That's our link tree. Open that up. That gives you a tons of different way, uh, places that you can go ahead. And whether it's wanting to be a part of what we're doing, helping us develop land, helping us to grow food, learning with us, doing some of our stuff like early rise of Bible study se uh, sessions and things like that. Um, I'll actually be doing tomorrow's. But um, Minister Nice will be doing the three after that for the rest of the month to help us close out. We're um, hoping that she's continuing to heal. So I told her I'd back off some a little bit. I know she's a warrior. She's probably ready to go. But I want to make sure that we look after each, each and every one of you. Like, y'all tell me to watch over myself. Y'all got to watch over yourselves. Right? Y'all hold me accountable to them. I'll hold you accountable to the same thing. <laughs> Out of love for you. Um, but, yeah. But, you know, just click on that link tree, though. Get us your information. And we'll make sure that we get back to you ASAP. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Thank you, everybody, for being on today. Um, and uh, we still got recordings and different things to come out. We got Patreon stuff coming out, too. We'll probably put some of the stuff from today on Patreon. So you guys will be able to go look at that stuff later on um, and be able to be participants in that. So we're thankful. We're grateful. And we honor you guys. That'll be at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern, New York time on Zoom for uh, Shavat for uh, Pentecost. So 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern for that. That's 1 o'clock p.m. Central. That's 12 uh, noon. Uh, what is that? Uh, Midwest. And that's 11 a.m. Uh, uh, Pacific time. OK, so two o'clock p.m. Eastern New York time will be on Zoom. If you need to get us other info, we just showed you how you can go ahead and do that for us. If you're on YouTube or if you go to the YouTube channel, if you ever want to fill out some of the stuff so we can have more of your information and be able to get in contact with you a little easier and add you to the stuff that we're doing. We have a form you can fill out there that we look over about once every week, once every two weeks at the most. And um, we'll be able to make sure that we add you guys in. Uh, matter of fact, I need to talk to Sister Kimberly. Um, I think we finally have some stuff that we can give you officially now that we got our stuff together. Um, and um, But we're thankful. We're grateful. I'm probably going to send a little text out to everybody who's on the ministerial staff. Um, not to the ministers in training, even though we might ask you guys to help, but to the ministerial staff specifically with just some um, things just to let you know, give you a heads up what's going on so you guys can be prepared if we need you to step in or do something like that. But we thank you guys so much again. Um, please um, study this word we talked about and meditate on it, fast about it, pray about it, whatever you got to do um, so that you can be hearers of it and doers simultaneously. Don't just hear it and then just believe it, right? Don't just do it, but don't do what you heard. Put the two together, but study it first to see if it makes sense, right? If, if you see that what we're saying, it makes sense, then you should utilize. You should you utilize it. You should exercise it. You should make sure that you're doing things in righteousness concerning it. But, um, yeah, we thank you all for being on so much. We appreciate you so very much for being on. We honor the king and queen in each and every one of you. Even if you're not living inside the kingdom and queendom yet, we appreciate the potential king and queen in each and every one of you. Please check out my wife, as always, the Honorable Maya, who lives a life that's able to be honored. You can check her out on TikTok, YouTube, her website, and Pinterest at Bloom and Flourish, not A-N-D, the letter N, Bloom and Flourish. Um, and you can check her out there. We appreciate you. We honor you. Thank you for your time today, everybody. Um, and um, we're excited about what the Most High is doing. Um, 
Um, you know, thank you again. May the Shabbat, this day of Pentecost, be a blessing to you. And may this continue to launch us into the next stuff going on. Um, we look forward to having, doing so much more, uh, supporting so much more. Thanks again to everybody who came on um, to uh, Shabbat Shalom service yesterday on the podcast and um, listened and supported uh, our very own Minister Kevin. Um, this is his month to go ahead and do things. And we're thankful again for everything that um, the Honorable Maya and her mother did um, the month prior, last month, for those four weeks. So we're grateful and thankful and we're appreciative. And I'm appreciative that I don't have to do everything and everything so I can start focusing on other things, too, so we can continue to grow. And uh, we look forward to doing a lot of great things. So thank you again. Thank you to those who are helping us behind the scenes with stuff coming up October. Don't forget, October 14th through the 16th is pretty much finished. And uh, as far as we know the place or whatever, the payment and everything that we're going to put out through the forums and everything that will be sent out to you, those need to be in, I think it's um, August 15th. We were going to say August 1st. We have been asking for August 1st. I know I was told I wasn't supposed to do this, but to be fair, we had to change things up. But we told you guys to save up to, to 300 per, you know, not per person, but 300 to be able to go. And if you bring in multiple people, we'll work out stuff to make sure it's still cheap. But we were trying to get it down to 150. I am proud to say it would definitely not be 300. It's not all the way down to 150, but it's a lot closer to 150 than it is 300. So we'll have that information for you guys. And um, therefore, you guys can start, you know, making sure that you got your hotels and all that stuff together. And um, we're excited about it. We're grateful um, for a friend of the community opening up um, their facility for us to be able to be used. And um, it's really going to bless us in a mighty, mighty way. And um, I think we're going to find a lot of um, a lot of interesting stuff that's going to press us and actually help us to grow so i'm really excited what's going to happen and um ministerial staff you guys be ready because y'all gonna have to be ready to do some teaching and stuff too i'm up <laughs> so you'll be getting assignments soon um because from what i've heard at least from everybody taking the training ministerial training and everybody who's on the staff everybody said they're trying to come so i'm gonna assume that you're coming uh, but we, we appreciate you. We honor you. I'm going to leave this up a little bit so y'all y'all will hear a little bit of background noise, but we'll also put some stuff out where you guys can kind of see some of the stuff. If you want to um, look at some of the things that you'll be able to get and buy and purchase as far as, you know, really it's donations. We don't sell anything, but certain donations you want to give um, some of the things that are coming out. Um, and we thank you. We appreciate you. We honor you again. And as always, um, this has been Pastor Kofi. Pastor the Sermons of Christ, where we are always changing lives one mind at a time, by being the voice of the voices and speaking the unspoken, until we have the great privilege, opportunity, and responsibility of being in front of you all again. Please remember, as always, Yashtel, that you are loved, you are necessary, you are majestic, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you, which is all of us working together, will be the reason why people who are in the system no longer have to be of it. Lashan Shalom, At Shabbat Shalom, because it is a holy day. Peace.